He was cheating the whole time. That's so in my own house, he was cheating <gasps> in my like. Jess Trish and probably one of the most requested guests ever. You guys constantly are in the comments saying, Brooke, 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 Brooke. And here she is today, Brooke Schofield. Did I say it right? I'm, yes, okay. you did. I'm so excited to be here. I actually cannot believe. I'm like, I can't believe I got invited. I am so <laughs> excited. You came straight from tour, which is insane. I did. I was not going to miss. I canceled my dentist appointment. I'm like, I'm going on just Trish. <laughs> you, you gave me like a bunch of dates. I'm like, the first one. Oh my God. I know. That was so cool. I was so excited. I was like, ah. Oh. I was so nervous too. I literally, I've had like shows like the last three days and it'll be like thousands of people. And I'm like, I'm more nervous for this than I was for that, That's which is so, so funny. funny. Cause you're just so cool and chill. You're like the chill girl. I was just like, I was nervous for you. It's I was to no know what I'm like. Nobody would ever say that I'm the chill girl. You except are. For you. You're so cool. Like when we went out to dinner after the canceled podcast, I was like, she is just, you're so cool. You're so nice. You talk to everyone. I always gauge by like how people talk to like Moses and stuff. like, you just talk to like every single person doesn't matter. And you're just like chill and cool and oh, like nice. Thank you. I love it. I just think you're like such a cool vibe. Thank you. I'm so happy you came with us. I'm like all of us, like, when you left, we were like, oh my God. It was the best day of my life. It was the best day of my life. I felt so like young and cool for like a day. You, you know? are young and cool. No, I'm not 25. Man. Well, what, what are you? 30? 35. That's the, it's the a decade the, older. No, it's not. Well, I'm 26. I'm about to turn 27 okay. next month. Wait. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's cool. I'm, I'm older. A lot of them are like a little bit younger. 25. Yeah. Okay. So 27. How do you feel going into your mid 20s or I'm late scared. 20s? I'm, well, I mean, I guess I feel the same, but I'm like, am I supposed to get married? Like, do I have kids? Do you feel that? No. Well, yeah, a little. But I feel like in LA, everyone, like I'm 35 and I'm just doing that. You know what I mean? I feel like I know, everyone. It makes me feel better too. And I feel like you really stuck it out and you like found it. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's like. It happens. Like Rihanna, who else was it? Someone else was just having a baby at like 35. Like everyone just has babies later, I feel. Yeah. I, I've always wanted to be like an old mom, I feel like. Really? Like I, would, I wouldn't mind having a kid at like 39. Yeah. Well, that's going to be me. I'm probably going to have a kid at 39 too. Like I don't think it's like, as long as it's like a safe pregnancy, it's like. Yeah. 40, why wouldn't you? It's like 44 having a baby. 45. Yeah, that's great. We yeah. Sh is she? Yeah. I, I mean, at least I think she's 45. Okay. But she, I guess she has like all the resources in the world available yeah. to her. Yeah. But, but still your body's your body. I love the idea of being an old, like I had my grandparents. So it's like, I, I had like old parents. Wait, you had your grandparents. Did they raise you or yeah. you just, Oh, Oh, I see. So yeah. they were like, okay. Yeah. In that case, it's kind of cool. I feel like I didn't know my grandparents and I feel like I won't know my grandchildren. So it makes me a little sad. Oh, you know what I mean? Hard. I think about that sometimes. I'm like, my, cause because my grandparents are my parents, I'm like, what if they can't come to my wedding or like, are they still alive? They're still alive, but oh. they're really, I mean, they're pretty old. Like eighties. Yeah. Well, they're in their 70s, but just like my grandma in particular is just very like. 70s is young. Unhealthy. Yeah. That, they're so young. So your parents are, so their parents had you young. Yeah. Well, my mom, my mom had three kids by the time she was 22. Oh, that makes sense. That why you might be like, I need to be an older mom. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So your grandparents raised you, because you talked a little about, about this on, I was on canceled podcast. You were saying that your parents, I didn't know they didn't raise you, but you said when you moved to LA that you were like, had to ask them for permission. You had to like show them a PowerPoint. Yeah. Well, I did that for my grandparents. When I say my parents, I always like oh me and my gosh. grandparents, but I did, I did. I straight up made a PowerPoint. I'm like, please let me leave college. And they're like, okay. And they said, okay. They did not care at all. Wow. How cool. But I mean, I said I was going to finish. Which, did you? No. <laughs> but look at it. It's working out for you. I know. And I was going to, I was doing like nursing. So I'm like, what was I going to do with that? That's crazy. So you went to college for nursing because you were in like sororities and stuff in college and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Oh my God. So you were going to be a nurse. Well, probably not. Honestly, I, I was really not doing well. I was getting like C's and everything. Um, yeah. How I was hard? cheating. Oh, in college? Yeah. How do you do that in college? Oh, so easily. There's really? like websites where you can go and find in entire exams. I put more effort into <laughs> cheating than I would have had to do like to just... Just learn it. Honestly, though, that's smart. I feel like that's like efficient. You know what I mean? You found an easy way to get something done. But um, it wasn't easy. It was like I was putting so much effort into it. It's like just learn the material and like you're going to end up killing somebody. Yeah. yeah. Learning college was not for me. I went to half a semester and then I was like, I'm good. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah. Like a community college even. And it was so hard for me. I feel like like I don't regret it because the experience was fun, but like, I don't know. I wouldn't do it again. I don't think. What age did you drop out? I was, well, I did three and a half years. So it was actually really stupid. Oh, what? 
Why didn't you finish? Go watch well, it now. Well, the only class I have left is biostats. Oh and I'm like, gosh. I tried to take it online and you cannot take biostats online. what is online. biostats? I have exactly. No <laughs> is it like, chem- is it chemistry, it's science, like, it's math? Just this, it's like the same as normal statistics, but it's like as like applied to like medicine and like, oh, I don't know. Oh, but clearly I, I didn't take it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's really impressive if you only have like half a semester left. Dang. I know. Maybe one day I'll go back and finish. Yeah. But I don't know if I can be a nurse now. I like talk about like really crazy things online. Yeah. Yeah, it is an interesting thing once you become like the influencer you are. It's like there's really no going back, I feel. I mean, there could be for you, but. I don't think so. I think about that all the time. I'm like, God, I could not, like now yeah. what do I do? I can't go be a like paralegal. Right. You have to be this influencer for life. What would you be doing if you weren't podcasting? Oh, I don't know. Or influencing. I really don't know. I wanted to be an, like, I really thought I was going to be an actress. That's why I wanted to come. That's I was so like, funny. That's what I'm going to do. Never even tried it when I got here. I am. <laughs> What do you mean try? I try I tried a little bit, but like auditions classes, what did you do? I was taking classes, I was auditioning like a little bit, but I was working. So it was like yeah. I thought I was gonna be able to come out here, audition, audition, I would book something and like I was just working at a restaurant all the time. I'm like, I don't have time. Yeah, it's hard. Well, restaurant jobs usually let you off a little easier. Where were you working? Did you ever say I worked at cat? Oh, that's fancy. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god. I'm like I saw you there. I was like so excited. Oh yeah. What was? <laughs> oh right, right, right. Like 20. Oh, so in 2018. That was like 2018. Yeah, I worked there like almost three years. Wow. So this is all like recent that you like full time influencer. Yeah. Just since the, like the podcast. Okay. So when did canceled start? 2020. It's we just had our like two year anniversary or two year birthday. Wow. When is it? July. Was it July that you started? I think, yes, I think so. Oh my God, two years. Oh my God, it feels like it's been on a long time. Well, you had a little break, right? You guys had a yeah, little- Yeah, we did like a like an eight month hiatus. What what was happening there? Can we, you talk about it or no? I don't know. We have like a little bit. We just had like di- like disagreements with the production company that we were working with and they just didn't like how we were doing it. We didn't like how they were doing it. So we just separated <gasps> from them. But. And now you're independent. I think, well, no, we're, we're with Studio 71. Okay, do you think- But we, ind- like, we hire- um, the production team and stuff, and we do it all ourselves. Okay, so you're kind of like freelance, and they kind of help you get. Like, yeah, ads and we and just stuff. we just send it out to Studio Seventy One, and they put it out. Yeah, that's the, that's how we do too. We have like a partner company, but like we do everything else. We build the set, we do all that stuff. like it's that. It's so much easier too. Now, yeah. like like you guys have it out of your house, so it's like you can just do it whenever. It's the best, and you guys do it out of Tana's house, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is nice. So, do you feel more like when you were with the other company? Did they tell you like what to who to interview, what to talk about? They tried, and of course, Tana's like absolutely not interesting, um, but. We were just saying, like, we had so many guests before, and it was just, like, a completely different vibe. We had the set built out, which I hope we end up doing again. Such a good set. Where's that set? I don't know. You guys can't like, take it with I you? Don't, I don't know if it's still there. No, because they had built it. Like, the production company had built it. Oh. So we couldn't keep it. It was such a cool set. I oh loved it. Um, I feel like we'll end up eventually doing another one. But Building another one. I like your guys' vibe now, though. It's very, like, casual, laid-back, friends talking. Yeah, that's, like, what we try to have it be, like morning talk like what you know when you wake up with your friends yeah you're like oh my god what happened last the night gossip, the dating <laughs> I think it's so cool like that's because I feel like there's not a lot of podcasts like that out there now it's all, a lot of them are just all current events drama yeah. Yours is I your mean, own we drama. definitely touch on the drama <laughs> but it's like your own drama right I feel yeah like, I guess you guys I talk try about, not to be yeah you never name names on your podcast I always wish you guys but would but they find them they always find them yeah I when I when I was doing deep dive yesterday I was just like okay I need to know who this person is you said there was a guy that had like nine Grammy nominations and like who is this? Oh my God. We, I, I don't even know who that is. It was is. like, it was someone, oh God, who was it? I'm trying to think of this dating story now. You said he had nine Grammy nominations. Oh, I had the guy who I was like, congrats on your Grammy nomination. Or like, I, I saw you were nominated for a Grammy and he was like, a Grammy. Oh, was it that? No, but there was, oh man, now I can't think of the story. Oh, it was man. like a story. I'm yeah. Like, well, did I have any business with a guy nominated for nine Grammys? Yeah, I feel like, and you're like, oh, I guess that's okay. I can't remember the story now, but I remember like, all your dating history is so <laughs> impressive. Like there's some people I know that you told me, and then there's some people that like, I just guess, but you always date like celebrities, well, high profile people. Yeah. I'm trying to get out of that, I think. And it just never ends well. Wait, what? Cause I was the same way. I loved, mine were like Z-list celebrities. You were dating like actual celebrities. No, the- uh, no, absolutely not. I just, 
I don't, I swear I don't mean to do it, but it's like, you like to see somebody who's like really good at something or like really loves to do something. And a lot of times that's like attractive. singing. Yeah. <laughs> or like comedian. Comedian. <laughs> you had a stand up. you seemed like you had a stand up comedy phase, which I, I did. did. I, I had like a five year one. Yeah. I thought I was like, I want a funny guy, but I feel like sometimes the stand, like the comedians aren't even funny they're like not. in, in they're just so like a regular serious. conversation. Yeah. They're usually really like serious and really dark. All the ones I dated were like kind of like scary. Yeah. And mine were like a long time ago. Mine were like, I mean, mine was like 20 years old. So they were like 40. So they're like probably dead now, but. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I want to like have a guy with a reg, but I want to have a guy with a regular job, but then it's like, I don't want him to go to work. That's the difficult. That's <laughs> the struggle. You'd have to like work with him or something or like, he'd have to start working with you. I feel like there's a lot of influencers who like husbands to start working with them because of that reason. Yeah. I'm like, what if them. like, I don't know. I have all this time on my hands. Yeah. I don't want to have to wait and tell him to come or for him to come home at like five. Yeah, that would be difficult. Although on the other hand, then you have like your own, you have your time away. Yeah. But in the same way, I wouldn't want to like be without my partner. I'd be like, I, I need can't. You all I'm the time. like, I'm a very like um, attached yes. partner. I know. I read that you like, what was it like six months? You were with a guy and you just like adapted his lifestyle. You didn't do anything for yourself fully. Just like it was my last relationship, but we literally went on our first date and never separated. That's. I, I, to me, I love it. I think that's everything. I did love it. Yeah. It was like, it was just a very intense relationship, like so quickly. And then and when it ended, you just were like, well, who am I? Oh, I was traumatized. Yeah. <laughs> I could imagine. So when you were with him every day, he's like traveling. He's yeah, he was, he was a singer. So he, I, he was doing a lot of like moving shows. around doing show. He was, do, he wasn't really doing shows at the time. He was putting an album out. So it was just every day, like. In the watching studio. him work every day. Yeah. Wow. And you just loved it. I was it. like, dee, dee, dee. I didn't have a podcast. So I was like, oh my God. Like, oh, so you guys were on break from the podcast. Yeah. It was like exactly, ah. it filled that exact like little time frame. What were your friends saying? Like, what would like Tana say? Which like, we never see you. Um, I feel like they all like thought it was different than it was. So they were like really happy for me. They were like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, yay, he's so successful. Yeah. He wasn't that. I mean, but. <laughs> Do you not talk about him? No, I, t- I, I do sometimes. Is it just like hard? Because you said that was your hardest one. That's when you lost a bunch of weight. Yeah, it mm-hmm. was just like a really traumatic ending. So yeah, we talked about it when I was on your canceled podcast, which is like crazy for people who don't know. I mean, there's just so much into it. Like I get bits and pieces of it here and I'm just like, this was an insane one. This was great. Just the lies, so many lies. Yeah, and- it was like, I feel like I just, that was the closest I'd ever been to a person, literally ever. And then it was just an imaginary person. Like he, I knew nothing yeah. about him. Like... And that's so scary because you're like invested in his life. You become one with him and yeah, you're just like, Ooh, you think this? you're so close to this person. And then you find out that you like, where are you? He, I don't know where you're from. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever find out anything real about him? Like, um, do you think anything was real or yeah, legit? I was doing like a lot of research, like throughout the relationship too. Cause I kind of knew, like I could tell you, you know, when someone's lying to you really? about like certain things and like, or like you can tell when somebody's like making up lies on the spot and I'd be like, that's just not a real story. I wonder why. Do you know why he was doing it? No. He's just compulsive liar. Maybe he yeah. just couldn't help himself. It, something like definitely probably had happened where he felt like he had to do that. But yeah. I'm like, I don't know where you're from. Like, is your accent even real? What kind of accent did he have? Australian. <gasps> Was it real? I mean, he's not from Australia. Oh! So I don't know. <laughs> that to me is like the weirdest thing. Um, well, I was living with this man. So imagine every morning he's like waking up and he's like, Good eye. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then I find out he's not even from Australia. I'm like, are, what, like, where'd that come from? Like, he had lived in Australia, but that's just not what happens. Wow. Wait, was he, was he on social media? Yeah. So he's, he's posting on social media as an Australian. Mm hmm. Are there still fans? Are people still like supporting him? Yeah, I mean, he released a song today. Oh my god, good for him! I guess I know, great song. <laughs> Did he ever write any about you? Um, he wrote a couple about me. They'll never come out. He, I feel like he knows that. Like the best way to hurt me is to never make a song about me ever. Why would he want to hurt you though? Because it's like you were the good. Yeah, he he does. Think- he just does. Yeah. Because yeah. is he young too? Is he in his twenties? He's young. He lied about his age. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> How old was he for real? He said he was twenty four and he was twenty two. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh, and he's he just young. thought like that was no biggie. I was like, well, you don't think that that was like a really important thing to tell me? And he was like, why does it matter? It matters. Yeah, especially that age too. Twenty four to twenty two is a big difference. 
sense. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, I mean, I, I like get it where he's coming from. I used to lie a lot too. So I kind of get it. Like maybe you want to impress someone or maybe yeah, you're Especially not- in the beginning, I, I understood the age thing a little bit just because I don't think I would have dated somebody if I knew they were 22. Yeah. Not justified at all, but I was like, okay, like I get why you did it. Yeah. But like at some point along the way, you should have been like, huh, by the way, I had yeah. to find that out on my own. I like, never told you. No. He so, actually went on the Zach Sang show and that's how it, it all. Oh, wait. So he went on the Zach Sang show and then said what? He said, he I was, was lying to this girl or what? No. So he went on the Zach Sang show while we were still together. Oh. <gasps> And he was like, like talking about his album and stuff, and his family that had, that had passed, and all of that. And I read the comments on the Zach Sang show, and that's when people were like, first of all, he's twenty two. Second of all, family's alive. Oh my god! So he's lying to Zach too. Yeah, but like that—that's how I found out. I read those comments, so that's why Zach was like really involved in the whole thing. <laughs> okay, yeah, because we talked a little bit about it off camera. I canceled it in here too, and I, obviously I love Zach and I love you. And I was trying to figure all this out because I'm like, how does this all relate? Because then I saw Tan on there. I mean, you kind of got yeah. in this drama circle. This drama. I feel like you're very chill, drama free. But then I'm like, there's a lot of drama that comes with it. <laughs> yeah, now it's like funny and I can laugh about it. But at the time, I was like. I was like really going through it because I I felt like my boyfriend died. Yeah. You're just like, who's this person? What did you say? What was your reaction? Did you call him? Did you see him that night? Well, I had confronted him like when I first found out and he just like lied, lied, lied. And I believed him. And I called my mom, which was not a good idea. And she was like, you know, like no one would lie about that for no reason. Like something horrible must have happened. And so I like thought that and I was like, you know what? I'll just let it go. I'll see past it. You do not see past that. Yeah. You should not see past that. Oh man. Because then of course he was like cheating and stuff. And it's like, why would I think he wouldn't cheat on me if he would lie about like his age uh, and his family being dead. Oh my God. So you found out about the cheating. Yeah. And then what? So did you break up with bro- him? No, he broke up with me. <gasps> Is that the craziest thing? Because he's ever? like, I got caught. Yeah. And what did he say? How was, what was the breakup? He was just like, the word, like, we can never see eye to eye. <gasps> oh. I'm like, <laughs> Lie to lie, baby. He's like, fully, what? Well, so he broke up with me. We got back together. I broke up with him. But Oh, okay. So you did get the final word in that, the final say. Yeah, but like so embarrassing. Like he killed his family off and I got, I took him back. That, no, but girl, I've done the same. <laughs> yeah, no, totally I'm medicated same, now, yeah. but like I was off my rocker. Oh my God. Why did you take him back? Because you were just like so attached. I was so attached. Mm-hmm. And I, I just like, that was my first serious relationship. So I yeah. like, I was just, I was like, I love him. Was this last year? This was exactly this time last year. Wow. So it's been a year. And are you healed from it or are you still healing? Oh, yeah. I mean, I still think about it, obviously, but I feel so much better. I was like not doing well at that time. I was like constant babysitters. Oh, man. What did you do? How did you stop from spiraling or did you just spiral? I I spiraled for so long. I lost like 25 pounds and like... Ugh. Just didn't eat. Was I could not eat, and that's never happened to me. Usually, when I'm like stressed out, yeah. I'll, that's eating is all I do. Yeah, same. But I was, it was so much anxiety that I just like, oh, oh my god. And were you just like laying in bed, or like? Yeah. Well, I had like I literally had like four or five friends that I like cycled between that mm-hmm. would ha- like come over and genuinely babysit me, and I just like sit there and sob. That's amazing you had that because I feel like when I spiraled before, I like don't have anyone and it's like the scariest thing. That's horrible. I can't, honestly, that's what I'm most grateful for because I'm like, had that, had I not had anyone, I would have probably done something really crazy. Wow. So you don't isolate, you don't like isolate or anything like that. You just, you like to I, wa- I definitely wanted to, but I was scared. Like yeah. I like was, because I was so out of body. I was like scared that I was going to like do something crazy. Did you see your parents at all during that time? No, but I, my mom actually like randomly, my like actual mom. Yeah. Talk to her so much throughout it because mm. she's very like, I mean, mentally ill. Yeah. So she like this <laughs> and person. So understands. she like she understood like why I took him back, why I wanted him back, and all that, and like that was nice because all my friends were like, "You're so stupid." <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, of course, I would say that to my yeah. friend. I'd be like, "Are you insane?" Like, <laughs> but I guess I feel like I understand your point of view. When people take someone back, I'm very much like, "If that's what makes you happy," but I guess you need those friends to be like, "Are you stupid?" <laughs> I know. I would. I would 100% be so disappointed in any friend who like would want to put up with that. But like, my mom was very understanding, and she knew. Like, yeah, she's like, she has the same um, like 
personality disorder uh, situation. Is it a personality disorder? Yeah. Is it borderline? I bo- yeah. Interesting. Because I, I heard, I was trying to research this because someone told me about, like people were telling me, she talked about BPD and all stuff. I'm like, does she actually say it though? I don't know if you've actually ever said it. I have said it. I don't talk, like, I don't say it that much because honestly, until that relationship, I was like, I don't really identify. Right. I was like, <laughs> I, I didn't think I fit yeah. criteria because I like, I'd seen it in my sister. I'd seen it in my mom. And I was like, I, I'm definitely not like that. Oh, interesting. So your mom, sister, and you all have it. Yeah. Wow. And so, well, my mom's my mom's bipolar. I'm not okay. bipolar. Okay. So she takes medication for hers. Yeah. Because but borderline, I, you can't take medication. Yeah. And a lot of times, I feel like a lot of people with BPD, you don't really like notice it or as much until you're in a relationship. I feel like it's way, way, way more amplified in a relationship. Yes. Very much so. Because then you start seeing, what are your, what's your biggest signs, biggest traits of it that you noticed? I feel like I'm just really like, I mean, obviously it was like so hyper emotional. Like I'm like, mm-hmm. I get so, so happy. So, so sad. But like, yeah, I feel like I'm very like compulsive and I'll like, you just get addicted to it and yeah. And well, also just being so attached, you meet him and then never letting him go. I mean, that's a very big sign of borderline. Just- yeah. And just the way I behaved in that breakup was so out of like, I look at it now and I'm like, you are insane. What did you do? A girl, I've done the craziest stuff. I put all my stuff online. As soon as I broke up, I'd cry and make a video. I know. Thankfully, like I wasn't really sharing that much of my, like my own life at that time. So thank God. But like, I, I was being so insane to him. Like I- Calling him a lot. I was really sick. I mean, I used to call people for like 100 times a day. I mean, even when oh, we I broke was, up 100 times. You, if you, yeah. I can't even look at the text. <laughs> I sent him probably 10,000 texts oh. like over the course, like voice memos, yeah. just like, like, and he didn't reply. Why? Oh, no. Yeah. No, not at all. I know. It's it's the worst. And it's so annoying when they have that hold on you too. And you just, you can't, con- it's like you can't control it. Like that is the worst part about born lightning. People like just don't do it. And it's like, you just can't control and it. I swear to God, it felt like somebody was like driving my body. Because mm. I was like, you are being insane. I knew I was you being knew. insane. But like. Same. Mine is almost like, do you like disassociate or black out? Or are you fully aware of what you're doing? I'm aware. that. So that's like why, another reason I don't really like talk about it that much. Because mm-hmm. people talk about like splitting. And I don't, mm-hmm. I don't really. Never do. feel that way. Like, cause obviously I go cr- like kind of crazy, but I'm, I always feel completely valid in what I'm saying. Interesting. And so like, it's not like afterward I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe that happened. Like, I'm like, I, I really felt that passionately at that time. That makes sense. So you, like, I feel valid in what I'm doing, but you're still like, this is not, this is not like okay behavior. Like yeah. you recognize that uh, yeah, it's not. I definitely knew I was like so not behaving normally. How do you, I wonder then how do you correct it or how do you deal with it. I don't know that I do. You haven't done it yet. No. Like how you regulate. (laughs) I don't regulate. Well, I I mean, I kind of do. I feel like it's, it's easier now because I'm like, you're, yeah, with time passing, it's just like you're less attached to it. Do you ever check up on him now or anything like that? Um, I like, I like to know just like what he, I mean, he kind of yeah. fell off after he went completely silent online after. Oh, because he got like exposed. I mean, that's a big thing. Not only are you lying to you, but you're lying to like your fans and like Zach saying. It is. Like, I just like, it's hard for me because I still don't know why. So mm-hmm. it's like, what if, like my mom always says too, she's like, what if something horrible really did happen? You don't know. Like family is so personal. And so like, if he wants to say that and like, that's like what that's he needs. True. Yeah. yeah, maybe he had a tragedy. Maybe all his family, like maybe something happened with his family that he likes to think of them as dead or yeah. something. Yeah, and so like that's what I was thinking. And so I'm like, I don't want to ruin his career yeah. and like make it look. Well, he did it to himself, really. You didn't have to expose him. I know, but. Which is crazy. So, hmm, I'm trying to think about all of that. It's just like a lot to take in because it's like, this is someone lying to you. You're also someone who's dealing with like yeah, your own personality I feel like disorder. Had it been like a completely regular breakup, I already had like the whole you know, a major attachment thing and stuff to deal with. But just the fact that it was like such a unique situation, yeah. like he, I genuinely felt like he had died. Like, yeah, he, cause he wasn't real. Like he literally was not real, but it's, I didn't know anything about him. That's, and that's scary. Yeah. And then he didn't check in on you or anything that he never was like, no, we, I mean, we, um, have spoken since then. Like we've, we were kind of doing okay until the Zach Sang thing came out and then he just blocked me forever. I see. And you haven't heard from him since. Mm-mm. Do you have feelings for him still? Or are you still like, I still no. care about this person? No, I definitely still care about him. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I feel like it never really goes away until your next relationship. I mean, with my yeah. experience, that's how it's been. I will like really obsess over, not even obsess, but I'll be like, I still really love this person. I still care about this person, even if they don't care about me. I still love literally every single person yeah. I've ever loved in my entire life. Like I still check on like people that I 
was obsessed with in the second grade. Yeah. I used to do I that too. I can't help it. Yeah. I can't. I just love it. It's That's the compulsion in you. That's yeah. the compulsive behavior. Because I used to do the same thing. Like I would check in on people I dated when I was like 18 years old, like as, as a 30 year old. I feel like when you find like the one that you're like really obsessed with, for real, they'll take away all that stuff and you won't care as much. I, I yeah. think so. Because I never thought I'd get over people. I would research everybody. And it's... It, to me, I like don't even think about exes anymore. Like I never think oh, about them. See, I want to get there so bad. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, I mean, I I just want to know. Like, it's he did the worst possible thing to me by falling off because it's like I just want to know that he's like fine and doing like okay. Yeah. So that I can move on. But like thinking that like he might be doing badly, I was like, oh my god. Both ways can eat you up. Like you don't want them to be bad, but then also as if he's doing bad, like I should have. Like I want him. Like I wanted him a little bit to be like miserable because I was, <laughs> but. Obviously, I mean. Well, he might be if he fell off. Maybe he's not doing so well. I don't know. I mean, maybe he's hopefully now, he's okay. I mean, he's back now. New song out today. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. He should make a song about being like a compulsive liar because I feel like a lot of people could relate to that. I know. And honest to God, like, I, I don't know. I feel like everybody's mentally ill. Like, clearly he, he has <laughs> to be mentally ill. And like, people will relate to that. There's there's levels for sure. I wonder what, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But he's a denier. Like, it was like, I would say things. I'd be like, you're such a narcissist. Like, you, like. And he was like, you're insane. Well, see, narcissists don't usually know that narcissists. I don't know that much about narcissists. I hear the word a lot. I've never been in a relationship with a narcissist, so I don't know. But Or maybe I have. I don't know. I don't – like, I. it's hard. I'm not, like – I'm not really, like, aware of all the criteria for each individual little yeah, thing. But I'm like, something's definitely wrong. Well, you were talking about love bombing, and you're like, I'm a love bomber. And I was like, yeah, I am too. But people think that's, like, a bad thing. Like, with – because I love bomb for sure. The minute I meet someone, I'm like, I'm ready to get married to you. because I know. Like, I just immediately, like, feel like I really – like. It's genuine. Yeah, I really feel that way. I feel the same way. And so when I hear this love bombing thing where they're like, I want to do this and we're going to get married. And I'll, like, that's what I say to everybody and that too, I was like in love it, with. I, like, I just feel that way in that moment. Yeah. I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't know why that became. So I'm like, maybe I'm a narcissist. I have no idea because I was like. No, I think that, it, I mean, honestly, I think that's a BPD thing, right? Yeah. Just like heightened sense of love relationship. You just think it's like so serious so quickly. Yeah. But I do think there's something to that. We're in tune with like our emotions and stuff like that. You know, we can like feel things so much. I see. That's what I, I I do like that. I love being like a super emotional person because it it has like the good part too. I get so happy. And so like, yeah, I will sob at like just the sight of like a baby. Yeah. Like, yeah, I get the same way. So I like that part of it, but the sad, sad, not sad. I can handle it's when I just get like the, the anxiety is like what I have a hard time. Oh, with. interesting. I don't get too much anxiety. Is that? Do you think? Do you think that's part of that, or do you think you've got an anxiety disorder too? Do you have like panic See, attacks? That, I don't know. That's that's another thing. I feel mm-hmm. like some of them like coexist and like overlap, and I just don't really know which is which. But the anxiety is like what really was hard because I'm like. I can handle being sad. Right. Being panicked is crazy. Yeah. Panic, I never had to experience that because that's a whole other thing. Like, how do you talk yourself down? When do you get panic? Like, when you're on tour, when you're by yourself? No, it was honestly just that whole situation. I literally woke up every morning feeling like like my whole family had just died. Like, I was so, the feeling was just like, just the worst panic. I don't know how to describe are you, it. Are you like, is your heart racing? Are you like not like, I, I don't know. I've never been through one of these things. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you just feel like so sick. Like I, I remember saying I, if someone had told me in that, like you can lose an arm and you'll stop feeling that way. I would have done it. Like I just mm. felt so, so panicked. Like, like the world was ending. Did you, so like, could you, but you could you catch your breath? Are you breathing? Are you, or are you physically like you have to, I some can people breathe, to the but I just, I, I, no, I'm not, I'm not like hyperventilating. I'm not like that type. I don't have like severe panic attacks. It's just like overwhelming, like overwhelming. anxiety. Do you do any, you don't do like meditation affirmations and none of that stuff, right? You're not into that I, sort of thing. Not really. I probably should get into it. Do you do like walks or like, how do you like Honest, decompress? <laughs> at that time it was just so, like I was honestly just taking so much Xanax. Yeah, <laughs> I know. That's I ha- like, and that's horrible. And like, I, I mean, I don't now, but like at that time that I really, that was the only thing I could do to like, just not. Oh yeah. That's how I, that's how I had to deal with it too, the Xanax. How, and you just didn't get addicted to that. You just were able No, to I was never taking enough like for it to be problematic, I don't think. But I like, it was so overwhelming to me. I, it was that or I just mm. do like, I'm like, I don't know, drive off a cliff. Yeah, I felt <laughs> that way too. No, it's very real. It's a very real thing, especially like breakups and you feel like it's the end of the world and it's just, it, it's a lot. And, and people don't understand it, especially if they don't have like a, if they don't have BBT or something where they're so attached to it because they're like, it's just, you'll get over it. But it, it is hard world. too because I, I feel like people hear like, they'll be like, oh my God, I'm super emotional too. And it's, you want to be like, it's not the same yeah. thing. Like 
I, it is so, I know how wrong it is and I'm, but I just can't help how I feel. I'm so like. It over, it, it like over comes you. It overtakes you. Like you can't function. Like, I know and really I cannot hard. drive my body. Like it's like, I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know what I'm going to do. That's the, di- that's the most difficult part. And that's like the hardest thing to get over. And it really just takes time. And sometimes like, I, like, like we were saying, you know, you're still like Googling the person from second grade, you know, it's like, it just yeah. doesn't, it may never go away, but do you have an addictive? Do you have any addiction personality, like anything addictive about you? A little bit. I have like, I like, I've had like addictions to like food or like things like that. I've never been addicted to like drugs. Like behavior addictions. Yeah. I definitely have like compulsion, like, like I'll overspend and I know it's bad. It's like self-harm, like literally yes. like overspending, knowing it's bad or like dating guys that I know are bad for me it's or like, like yeah, eating that- things that I know I don't want to like things like that, where I'm like, I cannot stop myself from doing that. But it's the hardest. I was, I just talked to Dr. Drew about this. Cause I was like, I'm addicted to, and I was the same way. I'm like, I'm addicted to spending. I'm addicted to eating. And I like actually can't stop. Like, I don't you know, know. People say that your relationship to food, money, and like men is usually are all like very, um, similar. So if you're an overspender, you'll overeat. And it's like, it's the same wow like thing. And I've noticed that I'm like randomly, I'll just want to spend every single dollar I have or yep. eat every single thing I have. It's such a hard thing to explain to people too. Cause they'll say, we'll just stop spending your same money or just stop eating. And yeah, but it's like, you can't explain I, it. No. And I genuinely, I understand, you know, people who have like, um, like compulsions to like pull their hair out. I forget yeah. what that's called. Like I completely understand that. Cause I'm like, you cannot, I cannot stop myself from doing it. I never even thought about that. Cause I always think that's weird, <laughs> you know, but it's like, <laughs> but like, you I, have like, to spend money. You have to eat. <laughs> I know. I remember I like, I was having the worst problem with eating for a while. Like I could, I literally, I knew I didn't want to, and I wasn't hungry, but it was like, it was like a self-harm thing where I was like, I have to gorge myself. And that's when I was like, okay, I get, I get my mom now. Were you, really? Did she have, did she have an eating disorder? No, but she has, she's a drug addict. So at that time I was like, okay, I get it. Like she, she doesn't want to do that. So when you're talking about your mom, sometimes you're talking about your grandma who raised you. And then sometimes you're talking about your biological yeah, so, well, mom. No. So I'm, I always say my grandma, but like my mom oh. is my, um, Mom. Okay, I thought like when you were going through the breakup, you called your mom your grandma, and she was like, "No, no, no, oh, my, my grandma it. has dementia. She like doesn't speak anymore." Oh my gosh! Yeah. Do you see her? Have mm-hmm. you seen her? Okay, I see her. I oh. like that's where I go home. So, and but she and your your grandpa is with her. Yeah, and, and he takes care of her, and he's the sweetest oh. angel. It's, he's like literally the best husband how's, in the world. How is that like dealing with someone who like raised you and like seeing them like that? It's horrible. It's so sad. Like that, I literally never talk about that part because it's like yeah. so sad. I see them on TikTok and I'm just like, oh my God, like that would be It is terrible. Yeah. 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 It's mm. my, the thing I'm most scared of literally in the world. Well, I did. I saw some interviews where you're talking about how you just cry over people's deaths even when they're alive. Like mm-hmm. your friend who's perfectly healthy, cry over it. And I'm this, I get the same way. Like you think about them not being here and you're just like, it's irrational. Like, you know, they're here. It's fine. But yeah, death is the scariest thing to me. I've never lost someone close to me yet. And I'm just very scared of it. Me too. I feel like, I don't know, my grandparents, especially like they are, I feel like they like rescued me. So I like love them so much, but I feel like dementia is like hard because it's she isn't there anymore you know what I mean Mm, but you know her as this person and she doesn't know you yeah that's tough sad sorry I'm like (laughs) no I trust me I get I get the same way that stuff is like it's hard and that's like that's those are your parents how you know your parents that raised you and I know but I just feel bad for her yeah I don't know and my grandpa's such an angel he like literally wakes up and every single day he like like she's not functional so he like he has like little baby monitors on her and like he's so sweet They've been together since they were 13. Uh, and that's like couple goals right there to see that. I don't know anyone who has have had a healthy relationship. So to hear that is like a beautiful No, thing. it is. It's amazing because I had my parents who were like beating each other. And then yeah. I had them who were like so solid and like amazing. Uh, do you think that's why you, with relationships, you get like attached? Like you want to find that person. Like you want to be a I supportive think so. person. Like, I mean, I would love to find somebody exactly like that because they like always been so in love. Like there's never been like, they, I've never seen them mm-hmm. fight or anything. So it was like the best like picture of marriage and love. That it's like possible. And especially now he's like taking care of her. He never complains. Mm-hmm. And like literally his whole life is just that now. And that's like the most beautiful thing. That's why I always wanted to find someone. I'm like, I want to grow old with someone to be like alone in life later. That's like, was always my biggest fear. Mm-hmm. And I thought I would be, I was like, you know, I'm going to be alone in life. And I was alone most of my life. I've been single since I was like, till I was like 30. I never was in a relationship and I didn't like it. But do you enjoy, do you enjoy a singleness at all? Do you like it or? I do, especially, I mean, I feel more sane when I'm single. Yeah. So you can, you can I'm find like, comfort in it. 
you don't need to have a guy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, of course I love to, but I am so obsessive that it's like as soon as I do find somebody like that, I'm not even thinking about myself anymore and I only, I'm only thinking about what they're doing and stuff. I feel like I probably need to work through that before I like actually try <laughs> to get into a serious relationship. I think the balance is good. I think also with you doing the podcast now full time, I think it would help anyways because you're like, I have to go to work and I have to do this, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And now I feel, I do feel like I have more of a sense of like, like I have purpose and like something else that I'm doing and mm-hmm. a job and like things to like think about and be happy about. I just feel like that last relationship, I literally had nothing to le- like fall back on when it was over. I was like, oh my God, I, yeah. th- I left my whole life and all my friends behind. What were you <laughs> doing for money? Were you just like, sa- you had savings? I had, I was still doing social media. So I was like making YouTube videos and stuff. I wasn't making like a lot of money, okay. but I was making enough to like survive. Man, YouTube is rough now. I don't, I like my main channel. I like can't even like survive off of them. Like it's so crazy. Really, AdSense. I just, my AdSense is like useless to me. It's just like brand oh, deals. It's brand deals. And you're very like brand friendly. So that makes sense. Well, that's, so that's why like you asked me about my only, like doing an OnlyFans. Yeah. And I'm like, I literally, I feel like I would lose all of those if I. Yeah, you probably. Because <laughs> I don't know. Like that's so stupid if yeah. you think about it. But. Well, I don't know. Tana does it and she gets brand deals on things. She does. So I think, I think you're at that level where it may not matter. I feel like my. For some reason, I got branded that way as like the sex worker. I don't know why, and so I never get brand deals. Like I don't. That. I really. I don't think that of you at all. I don't, I don't think. Pe- I don't think people do. I think because I did Adam and Eve for so long, that was like the only like sponsorship. We get, get. We, that's what we. That's all we do on canceled and like something with oh, the, something that's like for the smell of your vulva. I'm like, why are why? <laughs> I'm like, why are we talking about that? Like my grandpa okay. watches this. Does he? He. D- I didn't think so, but he ca- I called him yesterday sobbing my eyes out because of getting pulled over. And he was like, he's like, I heard you have a show today. Like, he's like, I've Aww. been watching it. Oh, is he, how old is he? Is he in his he's, 80s? I think he's 76. Oh, they're young. Like, when you were saying this, I was like, oh, they're very young mm-hmm. still. I mean, that's very, and your grandma's around the same age. Yeah, she's, or she's a few years younger than him. I think she's oh. 70, 73. But her dad had um, Alzheimer's. She doesn't have Alzheimer's, which is confusing because it's like. What's the difference? I'm not sure. Like Alzheimer's, you can actually see on a brain brain scan. Like you can see it's like a de- mm. deterioration of like something in your brain. Dementia, a lot of times people don't even know what it's from. Like hers was r- just genuinely randomly one day she was just gone. Like, mm. and she had had like, oh. or like a gallbladder surgery or something. It Like she had to have it removed. And when she got back, she was just like. Just out of it, person. completely out of it, and she's just been like that since. And so, and that's still so young. My mom is sixty five. My dad's sixty nine. So it's like a few years away. That's so young. I couldn't even imagine. It is. It's it's really yeah. strange. And so, do, so he watches he watches the podcast. I think. I <laughs> hope he does. I hope to God that he doesn't. But I mean, I, feel like it's not I, too I really bad. don't think that they would care. Like they've seen it all. Like yeah. my dad was a like crack at it. Yeah. So it's like, they, they're not really that concerned about what I'm doing. Like, right. They're like, you're supporting yourself and you look great. So, yeah. and they had boys. So they like, when they got me, they were like the most excited uh, ever. Cause it was like all of a sudden they had like this little daughter. Oh, uh, <laughs> Was it just you or you and your sister? It was just me. So my sister had come with me originally and then she got like sent back. Oh, was she bad? <laughs> she was so bad. Oh man. And, but she has her own issues too. You were saying. Yeah. Like she's, that. she was older. So it was like a lot harder. Mm-hmm. Like the time we did spend with my parents was a lot harder on her. Yeah. So you were kind of like raised as an only child a little bit. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I was with Tori until I was like 10 or nine or 10 oh, Okay. with my mom. And then I was with my grandparents from 10 on. And then when did you move to LA? I was 23 or 22. 2018, wow. I think, or 20, yeah, 2018. That's like not that long ago. That's so mm-hmm. crazy. Are you liking it? I love it here. You do. You wouldn't move back. I, I, I don't know. Cause now I go back. I used to be like I would never go back to Arizona. But when I go back now, I'm like I could definitely live here. Arizona's nice. What area are you from? Phoenix. Oh, okay. That's a nice area. It's yeah. very like up and coming. It's just it like is. conservative, it's, but I just like you guys are in such a beautiful area. I feel like I would love to come like out here oh, to raise a family and stuff. Yeah. I feel like just where I am now, it's like you could never. Yeah, you're like in you're in, in Hollywood. Hollywood. You have such a cool apartment though. You got a new apartment. I just got a new apartment. Oh, I'm so excited. Congrats. I'm like, thanks, Tana. Well, we don't say. <laughs> <laughs> no, girl, it's you. You're doing. You guys together are so good. I've watched Hannah for so long, but I never really watched her videos. The canceled podcast is where it's at. It's because of your guys' dynamic. It's so good. I really am so grateful for it. I'm like I always joke about how I'm like a uh, like nepotism <laughs> social media person because I had like this unfair 
advantage. <laughs> it works though. It really does. You have to kind of any more when people ask how to be an influencer, I'm like, you really just got to like collab, get lucky. I know, but I have you. so much like admiration for like you and Tana and people who like genuinely just started making videos and built your own audience. Oh, uh, well, you know, I think, but also with me too, I mean, collabing with people helped me. Like I always got spikes when it was like Shane Dawson or David Dobrik mm-hmm. or Jeffree Star. You know, I think that's just how it works. And I think it's fine. Honestly, and it's like not like you set out for it. You know, sometimes when you stumble onto something, that's the best kind of... Yeah, it's it, been like the best thing literally that's ever happened to me. <laughs> so you work, you're working at Catch. And I think I saw an interview where you said that like you got fired or something. Yeah. What did they fire you for? I For lying. Oh, <laughs> Ironic. Full yeah. circle. No, I, yeah, I got fired for lying. I said that I was sick, and then I got caught oh. in like a, a video of like, um, <laughs> like Post Malone was like opening his birthday presents, and I was like handing them to him in the video, and I was in a completely different state, and they were like, you "Bitch." Oh my god, you gonna be like that's a different day? <laughs> I mean, I'm like, uh, that's not me. It's like so like. Oh, how iconic though. So I, I yeah. honestly, I would do it again. <laughs> Wait, what, what was that situation? How did you get to be handing him his presents? No, it was like a friend of mine. She was like, oh, we can go to his like birthday party. I was like, absolutely. Oh my God. You're so connected. You, the fact that you know so many celebrities, I mean, I've been out here for like 20 years and I don't even know all these no, people. I had like one friend who she's just like the most beautiful like girl ever and she, everybody loved her. So she brought me around everybody. And like, oh that gosh. was the, like, that's how I ended up meeting Tana and everything. I'm like, thank God. Wow. That's, that's cool though, because I feel like most girlfriends wouldn't want you to like get ahead. You know what I mean? Especially since you're pretty too. They're like, cause you were platinum blonde. Were you platinum blonde during this era? I was. Yeah. During the catch era. Mm-hmm. Cause platinum blonde, especially platinum blonde girls, I always feel like, cause I was platinum blonde for so long. People don't want to like introduce them because it's like, you stand out. Like platinum blondes just stand out. No, you I, know? I always, that was when I, when I wanted to go brunette, I was like so afraid of that. Cause I feel like I always noticed the blonde person in the room first. Mm-hmm, me too. Yeah. Like I always, you and, and you, there's like an addiction to it. You want to be blonder and yes. blonder and blonder. And you're like, dee, dee, dee. what happened? But you were just like, I'm over it. I was. And I just, I was doing my own roots. I literally like was doing my bleach it and tone myself. It looked good. It looked good. And I was so over it. I was like, I cannot do this anymore. Yeah. I was going bald. So I was like, I need to stop. I wish I could be platinum blonde still, but I literally had like zero no, hair you're, left. No, I love your blonde right now. I love like a rooted blonde. Yeah. Cause I'm so scared. I would, I actually... Brunettes are the trend right now, like very much. I think brunettes are in. <laughs> Is that like so strange? Like yeah. for like a hair color to trend. I'm like, Haley Bieber better grow her hair out because I'm like, I want to cut it so bad. Do you? I no. I, I did. <laughs> don't I cut went it. On, don't I cut went it. on FaceApp and I gave myself a bob and I'm like, absolutely no, not. Don't cut it. I feel like now the trend too is like they're, everyone's going copper. They're all like this copper hair yeah, look right and now. I'm, like without makeup, I'm like borderline ginger. I have like freckles and stuff, so I'm like, I could re- I could probably like pass. Oh my god. I'm gosh. like ginger pass. Oh my gosh. Do you cover your freckles? <laughs> mm-hmm. People like do fake freckles now. They do the I faux know. freckles. I, I'm like trying not to do it as much, but I don't know how to do like a light glam. Like it's like. F- Same. I don't either. When I do the sheer, I'm like, how are you doing sheer? Mine just looks like messy. Yeah. That's the thing. My, mm-hmm. Mine just looks like I'm, I'm bad at makeup. Yeah. So, <laughs> Me too. So I'd rather just not have makeup on. I like the brunette though. I like it because the, the bleach blonde is kind of like going. I think I love that Tana's still going with it because honestly, like I love a bleach blonde moment, but I think most people are like kind of getting over that trend. Yeah. I feel like it's better for us to be like opposites too. And yeah. I'm, what's so shocking when I went brunette, it was like night and day. Like the, the guys that were never, ever interested in me at all, like all of a sudden were and vice versa. Like interesting. Like what kind, what caliber of guys were now coming for you? Just like, uh, like guys that I had a crush on before that maybe like didn't like me when I was blonde. They were all of a sudden like, Oh, Hey, it's so odd because you would think, cause like growing up, well, I'm a little older than you, but growing up it's like playboy was definitely like the desired, like Pamela Anderson, Holly Madison, I know. but it, guys in my experience too, every guy I know they prefer brunettes and they prefer like light makeup. And I'm just like, wait, what? But this I thought is your ideal of beauty. It's I very weird. Know. God, I wish so bad. I would have loved to be around like LA during the Playboy times. So like, that's my dream. Yeah. Have you had Holly Madison? Yeah. She was my first guest. Oh my God. Of course yes. you. That's like perfect oh, for you. I was dying. We did our first, we did a mukbang together and I picked her up in my car and had McDonald's. Oh my God, how cute. So nervous. Cause she's like my everything. Like, I think she that's how I deal. feel about you. Oh, <laughs> You're so nice. That's so crazy. I don't. To me, I don't think of people like watching me, especially with this young generation. It's always bizarre when they like watched my videos or something. They're obsessed with everybody's <laughs> obsessed with you. I mean, it's very nice. Lila and I like Lila and I have been friends for 
as long as I've lived here. And we used to drive around. I had like a Kia and we would drive around and like literally be like, could you imagine if we were like friends with Trisha? No could you imagine? Way. Oh my God. Obsessed with you always. That's the coolest compliment, especially when now you guys are like the cool ones. And I'm just like, oh my God. No. You're like, no. <laughs> You will always be the cool one. No, I copied you today. We were talking about how we love to like, you're like, I copy everyone. I'm like, I copy everyone too. I have no sense of like personal, like every time I have to get dressed for anything, I'm like going to like one of three Instagrams. I'm the same way. I have no idea. That's why I cosplay so much. Cause I'm like, I have no idea what I want to wear. So I'll just cosplay. cosplay. I cosplay my wedding. I cosplay everything. Cause I'm like, I have no idea what to wear ever. Oh my God. I just saw you did your um, cover and in your little Egyptian. Oh Yeah. (laughs) That was like, a, that's like, I'm telling you, the young generation, there was a young photographer who was like 20 and he's like, we should do a King Tut and Sport. I'm like, are you How sure? fun. I love that. Yeah, it's fun. I love to just, I love dressing up, but I love dressing up as people. I love cosplaying. So when I saw, I wanted, I got the Bottega earring specifically for you. And then I saw, oh I think a couple days ago on Canceled or something, you guys were talking about how they're Bottega. And I was like, yeah. what? Like I, I'm all about Amazon. I would have bought the Amazon ones hundred percent. Are those the Bottega? Yeah, these are. Or these are, these are actually from um, Anthropology. These, oh, these ones. they're kind of bougie. That's what I thought until somebody, this girl came for me so hard. She was literally like. Just a random person or like yeah, a she was like somebody who worked where we did. She didn't come for me that hard, but she, I like, what did she she's say? She's like, oh my God, I love your earrings. Where are they from? And I go, Amazon. She goes, no. I'm like, what? I think Amazon was the cool thing, especially now we're going to say Amazon store. Are they in your storefront? They are now. Do you have one? Do you have <laughs> I'm, a storefront? I'm, I'm, I'm about to. People say they make so much money on storefronts. I can't. And I, have I, one do, I, I do have one. I put it in the description of all my videos, but nobody ever buys anything my, from same. it. Same. I'm like, and girls, I always tell I, people. I've been going to these like Amazon influencer events, and there are girls who are making like the craziest living yes. off of Amazon. But I'm not really like a fashion girly, so I feel like I would have to put like, like, I don't know, like pillows or something on there. Yeah, but your earrings, those would be a home run if you put those in I your store. I should have done that. I should, I, honestly, we'll I think it's too late now. Comes. We had so many people come up to us at the show last night, like, I bought them. I'm like, <laughs> oh, I literally only know you for these earrings. Like, I really, and then I like researched, I saw like Kylie Jenner wears them and stuff like that, but I always just saw you wearing them. So I was like, I need to get some of those earrings. And when I did a little Google search, like the Reviews Cooker image, it comes up to Bottega. So I was like, okay, I'll buy these. They're freaking expensive. And then I just saw you guys talking about, and I think Tana said she oh bought God. fake ones. I'm like, oh my God, here I am. I'm like, I'm such a, like, well, not, it's not that I'm buying like fakes, but I just have never been like I like I don't want designer things for some reason it's better especially well, if you have not that I could even afford them but like no well you definitely can <laughs> with all your brand deal money but it's just better I think I wasted so much money on designer stuff and I try to sell it and it's well, like a lot of it's like investments like a Birkin's an investment but like yeah sometimes I'm still trying to sell one of my Birkin's well, well isn't, it, isn't it like rainbow <laughs> <laughs> it's stuck up there forever <laughs> only Jojo Siwa would buy it but I'm sure we're not on good I terms I don't know if she'll buy it <laughs> yeah I don't think we're on good terms anymore <laughs> I would be like oh I my god that was so wild when you guys get like guests like that and everyone tries to like not cancel you guys but what do you feel are do you feel the backlash or are you just like whatever it's fine I definitely feel the backlash I like pay attention to it a lot more than Tana does you do I'm, I'm still new to it she's so used to it and she knows like mm-hmm. I I saw you say actually on I think the Zach episode where you were like I just can't put any value in it like it's such a pendulum like yeah it's a pendulum because there's sometimes when everyone loves me and then sometimes where everybody wants you canceled yeah, and gone yeah and it's so it's so quick it's so quick it I'm changes like, so fast I'm like like us yes <laughs> exactly it, but that's in the way it's kind of good because you can if you can regulate your emotions you can regulate how you feel about the pendulum swinging but I can't that's like I get so oh, you're hurt not there over yet. stuff like that like. The comments, I'm, the Reddit is crazy. No. I'm, I'm off Reddit now, but like that was that was my like addiction, self harm thing situation for mm. a second. I was like going on there, like knowing I was going to be hurt. Why? Why? I don't know. I can't help it. No, I'm the, okay. So I'm the exact same way. I was just wondering if you knew why, because there was a site called Guru Gossiper when I was your age, and it was like a Reddit, and people would say the nastiest stuff. It was like my my username is one ton of farm Jane. It'd be like blonde pig face for acne. Like it was just like the worst things, and I was like, and I would go on there every hour in check and I'm like what are they saying now and it is a, it is must be like a self harm thing but how did you stop going on it because it's hard to break that addiction I mean, I'm like sometimes I still look do you <laughs> I can't I really can't help it like I just I want to know because because mm-hmm. I like to see like the 
like positive feedback or like what people think, or if we're doing something like wrong, I right. want to know about it. But sometimes I'll go on there and it's just people being mean for no reason. They're like, so mean. And it's crazy because they will be mean to like literally everyone, even people you think are just like so nice and sweet. They're just like pick apart, pull apart. Yeah. It's the worst. I don't know. It like, it hurts too. when you feel like there's a little bit of truth to it. Like my big thing is like people are like Brooks, a pick me. And it's like, I am a pick me and I know it. <laughs> Wait, are you? How? No. I think, no, I, I am. I am. What, how? But I don't know. I, like, it's like, I don't know. I have like only child vibes and like, I just am a pick me. I have been all my life and I'm really, really working through it. Uh, but I feel like when I, I just learned pick me recently from TikTok, pick me is, is like, I'm not like the other girls, but I don't think you're like that. I think you're very, I like to copy girls. Well, sometimes you know? you'll just say something you're interested in and they'll be like, that's so pick me. And I'm like, uh, that's okay. So funny. I'll be like, yeah, I read this book. And they'll be like, no, you fucking didn't. <laughs> Okay, like, well, that sounds like okay. something they're just like projecting. Yeah. I know, but I get, I do but get do hurt th- by that because I'm like, I, I have, I've had moments where I'm like, that was, why did I say that? I guess, yeah. I mean, I, but I don't think that considers you that. Also, I don't think pick me's are that bad when people say it. I I'm just like, hate, oh. you know, it's like gaslight. It's like people learned the term. Yeah. I'm so glad yeah. the term didn't exist when I was like in high school because <laughs> that was when I was really struggling with the whole pick me situation. Yeah. <laughs> But like the gaslighting is on another level. The gaslighting word, people using that, it's like a, it's up there a little bit with narcissist for me because I'm just like I don't even know what is gaslighting. Yeah, what's people narcissist. do, and it sucks because narcissist is thrown away around so much that's like you almost don't even know what a real one looks yeah, like anymore. Right. It's like there's a difference between somebody who's just like like self like obsessed and somebody who's a narcissist. And then what is that difference? And it's like you don't know. Or people who just are like like you said, like people who genuinely love to love people and like is that a love bomb or is that narcissist? it's like crazy to decipher. I don't, I don't understand it. I'm like trying to get on like therapy TikTok and try to understand like all these little things. I'm like I watch one who talks about like complex PTSD, which is like like a lot of people who have like childhood trauma and stuff. And it like oh. have you heard of like limerence? No, what is that? It's supposed to be like or well it's it is it's like when you become so obsessed with somebody that you know you can't have or you know that they don't want you back and you like imagine a whole life with them and like Whoa. and it's something I do all the time. Wait, what is it called? I think I've had I think I have that still yeah. all the time. What it's is like it? like when I, I would do it like especially when I was younger, I would do it with like celebrities and stuff. Yes. But now it's like people who I meet, I will like literally have one conversation with a guy and all of a sudden I'm like thinking about our whole life together and I obsess over it. Wait, and where does the limerence come from? Like, is it a... That's, I think that's just like the word that describes it. I'm uh, uh, probably butchering it because I'm like... I never heard that word because I think that about literally every celebrity. Like, I envision, or like TV shows or anything, I envision like, oh, what if we're friends? Or what if, like, I really see it happening. And I, I even tell my husband about it too. I'll be like, it used to be when I was single, like, oh, I will marry... Like, I really thought I was going to marry Brad Pitt. So I was like, well, let me do this cardboard cutout thing. Maybe he'll notice me. Maybe we'll get married. Like, I really thought it in my head. I like that too. I've always been yeah. really like celebrity obsessed too. I wonder if that's like a... I wonder. Yeah. Oh, there is a thing. I think Dr. Drew told me about this too. It's something about because I asked him this because I was like what is it about why do I want it's like being picked by this person who's like adored by everybody it's like you know when you go to a concert and you dream about being picked up on stage and it's about being like selected you know you want to be the chosen one because so many people love this person yeah so if they love you that must be something like extra special about you is how I would think or just the fact that they're so adored for me with celebrities I'm like oh people people know them and oh we get nice seats if we go to like restaurants like it was always that I just like the idea of yeah I don't know what it is I it don't is know weird what it is either because not everyone thinks that about celebrities like no people don't have that <laughs> at all and like th- I feel like people have like healthy obsessions with or like they'll like be a fan of somebody without being like so I used Obsessed. to get like physically ill over like celebrities Same. yes like the fact like Miley Cyrus for example I was like I can't like it, it hurt me so bad that she would never be my friend interesting I get that <laughs> way too or I think oh this person wouldn't like me so you know I, I get like that too it's interesting it's with girls too so it's not just guys that you would like be like, we're going to, we could have a relationship. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I was never like a Justin Bieber. I know a lot of people feel that way about like Justin Bieber, but like. <laughs> I, I think I'm too old for Justin Bieber. I don't get that. I, I think yeah. I was like a little bit too old for it yeah. too. I just like didn't, I never like fell into that. But right. Like, I Who was like, one? Uh, Nick Jonas. Really? I, thought, I like, I was so ill over it. I would like cry. I like, wow. I, I'm like, he will never be my husband and he really won't. He's married. <laughs> 
you, did you get sad? Because sometimes I got sad when they would get married or if I found out they had babies, I'd be like, shit, my, and now I can't be with them. Yeah. Did you actually get, were you when he actually got married? I would, well, I mean, I had I probably like outgrown him a bit by then, but. You weren't a little sad. I would always get a little sad. I still do. I'm married and sometimes I'm like, oh man, <laughs> like, I guess I won't get with them. You know what I mean? Sometimes I feel like You're when hilarious. I find out someone has a, I think I found out the weekend had a girlfriend. I was like, oh man. Oh <laughs> my God. I just got um, an email about like the weekend is doing like a, a collab with like Blue Bottle or something and they were like God. sending merch. And I'm like, you have to send it to church. Oh my God. I know. He's my new obsession. I'm telling you, I go through these like phases and I didn't care about him like two months ago. Now I'm like obsessed with him. So oh it is weird. And I think about him like being my friend. I even tell Moses, I'm like, okay, well he could come on the podcast. And I'm like, what if he does like a second season of the idol and he wants me on? Like, would you let me kiss him on the show? Like it's very, I think I, yeah, I love, I love how far you think into everything. It's funny. It's yeah. like, I think you're just like a big imaginer and I'm that way too, where I like, I yeah. love to just like completely make up entire stories yeah. in my head. I think it's, I think it's healthy as long as you're not like acting on it. You know, like there's stalkers who then go like, we're supposed to be yeah. together. I guess that is where it gets like, a li- I've, I've never stalked anyone. No. But I, I thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've ever, I mean, I definitely showed up to people's houses that I know. Like if I was dating someone and we broke up, like I've definitely showed up, I mean, to like pretty much every ex-boyfriend's house, like uninvited, but no, not to yeah, celebrities, I'm like same. but I will show up to like book sign. I used to, I don't do this anymore, but I used to show up to like book signings and stuff, like hoping to get to meet them or, you know, meet and greets yeah. or something. But if someone would tell me a celebrity's there, I would like go, you know, and if they weren't, I'd be like so disappointed. I'd I feel like, oh. like me and Lila used to be like that. If we like knew like a certain influencer or something was going to be at a party, we'd be like, have to go. Interesting. So do you feel that way? Way about about social media people because I never felt that way with social media people. I did I, for sure. I did because really? like like when I was in college and stuff. Like honestly, like the like vlog squad. We really I yeah. loved I loved them and I was like I was always like so excited if I would see them at like Saddle Ranch or something. And it's would, so ironic now because now I'm like Mm-mm. wait really so you got over that oh, like yeah. how how did you get over it like you were obsessed with them and then how were well, just, just knowing like it, it, the magic goes away when you know them. That's true. They always say like never meet your idols. I guess but. And have you ever had that where you like meet a celebrity and you're disappointed about it? Oh yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think. I mean, maybe not disappointed, but you know, like in my head, I think me and Britney Spears were going to be best friends. And then you go to the meet and greet and obviously she meets so many people and she doesn't have time to talk to you. So yeah. we didn't even do to exchange words. And I was like, I feel like she would love you. Well, I mean, it was a, it was a two second exchange. We have a picture together and it was so quick. And I was just a little bit after I was like, God, I really thought we were going to be friends. Well, you will. <laughs> I know. Well, you will. I know it. Who would be your Drake moment to have on the podcast that you think, oh, this is it. This is where we made it. Oh, I don't know. I get, I mean, we, I would obviously, of course, love to have like Britney, but yeah. like, Britney would never go on Are a canceled Brittany? podcast. Maybe. But, you know, but I to just me, love she her. would do random some stuff like that. Like, I she'll feel like she random. Would, I feel like she would come on. The, I feel like she would be safest here. I think Zach said that too. Like, <laughs> I feel like it. she would be like so open. Oh my God. It'd be great. She lives very close. And I didn't even know it. I did not follow her here, but she lives very <laughs> close to us, like five minutes. And I'm just like, oh, cause I see her in the same spot. So I'm always like, so we'll go to like the Dave's hot chicken. She goes to, I was like, oh, I know where that is. Oh my yeah. God. She goes to Dave's hot chicken. Yes. I'm like, we she, went there. It's a woman been, with taste. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of everything. I actually never had it. I think before her, but oh, it's so good. I love that you love Britney because you are so you're like a ten years younger than me. So it's but like, I had an well, I had my older sister. So like okay, when we were young, it was like it was all Britney, Very Britney, Christina. But you are Miley. You said you like the Miley. I loved. I still to this day I love Miley so much. Wow. Like she was my one that I was like so sick. I loved her. Maybe she can come on and your she's, podcast. Honestly, she's what made me like be obsessed with famous people too. Because I like I used to not like understand that people could just be rich. I thought it was like you're either poor or famous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh my God, I have to be famous. Yeah. To be to you, be Miley Cyrus. Yeah, that's how I always thought too. I thought I wanted to be famous or even an actress to like meet these people because I'm like, well, how do they meet? Okay, an actress. So that's why I always thought too. Yeah. And being famous, like, I guess with your generation, like you could social media was the way. But for me, I was like, how do I become famous? Because there wasn't like social media. And I'm like, yeah, I just want to be famous. Talent. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> it's like can't sing, can't dance. Did you try? Were you trying to? Did you ever sing or dance? No. No, you never even tried. Well, I did, I did dance. I actually grew up dancing. But oh, okay. Did no singing. No singing. No singing at all. No acting. You just want to be an actress. I wanted to. I tried it. I like, you know, I dabbled and I would love to do it now. I feel like now I feel a lot more confident to do like things I wouldn't have done before. Because yeah, I feel like too, now you have, well, when you have the experience for on camera, you have the fan base, you have that confidence that people love you. And that's, what's like kind of special about it. It's like, I would have never wanted to make YouTube videos if people, if I didn't think people wanted to watch. So the canceled thing was so nice. Cause it was like, so you did Tan- after. Canceled. Yeah. So Tana just er, invited me on canceled. I did a bunch of episodes. And then as soon wow. as I started feeling like, Oh, like people care. So, so you, she, she asked you to do canceled without, you never did any YouTube videos. Or anything. I wasn't on social media at all. 
Wow, I was just her th- friend. How do you think that happened? Why? Because she has so many friends and so many like outgoing friends. Why do you think she picked you? I don't know, but I'm so lu- I feel so lucky uh, about it. <laughs> that's amazing. I love that even more. That's so cool. But maybe she's new. She's like, you're the one. <laughs> she asked me like some random day. I don't know if she thought that it was going to be like forever. She, it was definitely just the first episode in the beginning, but wow. then we just did a few more and it stuck. But I'm so like... So grateful. And people like love you. Like they really do love you. I'm not, not exaggerating when I say like every, every week we do a live chat and everyone's like, Brooke, Brooke, when's Mm. Brooke coming on? Like it's, it's very cool to see. I love it. Oh my God. Yay. Oh, that, and I love the story how you just like fell into it too. Well, I just like, I want, of course I wanted to do it. Like I would have loved to do social media, but like I, I was nervous to make YouTube videos. I was nervous to do anything. Just like. Just the same way I would have never been able to do like shows or anything. And now it's like since we have canceled, like I feel comfortable doing it. Was this your first tour this year? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. So how was it? It was so amazing. Oh, my God. Would you guys go on stage and you guys did you do like a podcast live? Yeah, we just do like a, a live podcast. We plan it a little bit before because... Obviously, like, we don't want to get up there and be like, so. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's up? <laughs> Q&A. Do you guys do Q&As on it? Um, kind of. We do, like, we try to, like, interact with the audience a little bit. Just, like, yeah, like, what do you guys do for work? And then we'll talk to them about that. But wow. we had so many people who were, like, like lawyers and teachers. I'm like, what? That's why, isn't it? <laughs> you think, like, oh, my God, you have, like, a real job and you're watching us. It's, like, I think crazy. that's so fun. You think it's just, like, little kids. And you guys... We're playing huge venues. What were they like? Five thousand? Oh no, we our biggest one I think was twenty five hundred, which was like crazy. That's huge because there was one where it was like double stacked. I saw. Yeah, that was it was Pittsburgh. Wow, and that's huge. It was it was so fun. That's it's more. cool too because like social media is hard because of like you can see the numbers, but it's like not physical people. You don't understand that they're like real. Mm, yeah, and for people to come out, it's very hard. I think the most I ever sold maybe was like seven hundred tickets. It's like twenty five hundred is very I'm hard. Like, I need you to tour again. I would do anything. <laughs> I to think see my it. touring days are done. I liked it at the time, but um I was just I was in a dark place, so I just needed it to get out of the house and like do something. But I get I maybe that's where I get anxiety. I don't know if I should call it anxiety because it's like I can like function. But I get nervous. I, I just get nervous with people. It's not like the fans obviously it's like haters or something coming out. Even though it's never happened, I just get nervous about that. Yeah, I don't know. It's like it's stress a whole stressful situation anyway. It's like yeah a lot to tour and traveling and stuff. The tra- Traveling but, every weekend, because you guys were just going out on the weekends and coming back. We were we would do like four or five shows at a time and then come back and like sometimes during oh, the week. Yeah, that's just kind of random. But and it was just you guys, or were you guys traveling with people? Um, like tour different managers? people came every time. I mean, we had a tour manager. Lila came to the whole show. Lila's in every show because wow. people love Lila. Yeah, she's the greatest. She's, she's a wild card. The funniest person alive. I love it. How did you guys meet? Um, through Tana? she, no, I actually met her. She was best or she was close friends with my roommate. Like when I first moved here and I had a random roommate Oh, and I just stole her. Oh I was my- like, that's my friend. Does she, does she live in the house with Tana or does she live? With, you live by yourself, right? I live by myself yeah. and Lila lives by herself too. Okay. She's a really, really great apartment. I love your apartment. I, I think I know where mm-hmm. you live and I always wanted to live there and it's like so expensive. I remember looking at it and I was like, oh my God, that place is it so It is bougie. so stupid, but I'm like, I'm so stupid with my money. No. <laughs> the age and like you're making the money. I, I was the same way. I spent so much money on that. I saw you. I literally saw you talking about it today. I'm like, I'm exactly like that. I'm like, if it's in my account, I have to spend <laughs> yeah, it. To spend it. It's there. So you said, I, I want to save it too. So, cause I'm like one day, what if one day the canceled podcast is just over and I'm like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I, I have no advice to give on that because honestly, I'm the same way too. The only reason I was able to save money was because quarantine. I like, couldn't do anything. So I was just like, all right, let me like save money. But yeah, I'm saving now, but yeah. it's been really hard. It they comes back it. around. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what my mom says. She's like, it's going to, it, it always does. It does. That's the one thing I definitely believe in, which is like, maybe it's like people don't like this thing, especially savers, but money is such a flow. And like, that's another thing that I know for sure is money always comes back around. Yeah. And I do believe the more money you put up, the more you spend, like the more you get. I think so too. Yeah. That's like the only manifestation I'm like really, really passionate about. I'm very <laughs> big into that. That money's a flow. You got to spend money and money will come back. Like, you know, when I tip, I'm always like $20, $30. Like I just, you know, I just know it all comes back. So yeah. it's never something to worry. Especially you're doing such a good thing too, you know, with your money. So I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. And you work hard and, you know, do all, especially touring. Touring is hard. It's like such hard work. Mm. Especially meeting everyone. Meet and greets are exhausting. Like just to take pictures and talk. and Yeah, but so fun. And it's like, ugh. 
Do you love it? I love it. That's the only thing I miss is I miss meet and greets. I think those are so fun. It is. Fun. So I just, you just can't like, I can't believe I'm like, you care about it. Yeah. People. And to see it, to see it, like you said, in person is such a different feeling than just reading comments online. Right. And it's just like surreal. Everything online feels fake to me. I'm like, which is kind of a good thing, which you need to like keep it that way, especially don't want to hate. I'm like, that feels really real. No, <laughs> which is, isn't that so silly though? It, you like, none of it feels real. I know. That's except the hate. That is what's sad about it is like mm-hmm. you read like a billion sweet, sweet, amazing comments. And then like the one person who's like, she's a dumb pick me. I'm like, <laughs> it's not the worst thing to be called, I guess. No, there's way, I get called way you know? worse things. Like, people, a lot of people think I like hate Tana. Oh my I'm God. like, but okay. I feel like that's just normal because it's like women, they always want to p- pin women against women. So yeah. And the, we're, but we she's my best friend. Of course, like we argue and we fight and like yeah. we're on tour together. So we're yeah. bickering constantly. So like, of course we're going to like go back and forth a little bit. People just want to put that out there. I think the people had said that for so many years that I hated Tana too, because of like everything. They're like, she hates Tana. I like the vlog squad stuff. I'm like, I never hated Tana. I always say that. I'm like, I always like feel bad for Tana because she's always in the midst of all this, but um, she loves it though. She's so good at like capitalizing on that. Oh. She's, she's a brilliant, like I th- mind when it comes to the drama. Yeah, no, she's she's very smart. And it seems, I don't know her in that way, but she doesn't seem as, like so emotional about stuff. She doesn't get she's her not, emotions in the way. That's like her superpower. That's like the one thing I just, I wish I had so bad because she's like, she can detach her emotions from everything and I'm so emotional yeah, about everything. Yeah, I'm very much the same way. I take everything very personal. It seems like she can like detach, which is like great. Even with your guys' situation, the whole Mindy situation, stuff like that, I always thought, or, or the recent one with Ashley, I'm like, I asked her when she was on the podcast, I was like, how do you like overcome stuff like that. Like, how do you just let it go? Because for me, I would hold, we were talking about grudges. I'm like, I would hold grudges all day long if yeah. someone like slept with someone you're, I liked. You're <laughs> so good at that. I can't hold a grudge with like anybody, but she, oh, she's- you can't hold grudges. I can't easily hold a grudge. I forgive everybody for everything. And it's like my- fatal oh, flaw because okay. it's like these people step all over me but Tana right. <laughs> Tana's just very like she's very like loyal to her friends mm-hmm. like all of her friends have been with her forever yeah she doesn't have like she doesn't really make a lot of new friends like everybody's like always been her friend so, so she just like cool. holds out mm-hmm. I think that's a good way to be can you get over you get over stuff easily I yeah because I just feel like I always I make excuses for people and like yeah they were going through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's good. I, I used to hold grudges. I let it go a lot more now. Like, oh, I definitely let it go now because it just, like, eats you up and stuff. It's not I know. Good. And th- that's the thing. It's, like, it affects me more than anything. Like, even with, like, the ex thing, I was, like, I don't want to hate him because it's, like, I, it hurts me, not yeah. him. And it's hard to let that go. It's, like, so hard to let it go. And just friends in general. Like, girlfriends are always – have always been difficult for me. I like the idea of it. And you have to see a lot of girlfriends in your life. How do you – manage it how do you deal with it like how do you is there drama or is it just not as much drama yeah of course there's drama but I've oh I've always had a lot of girlfriends like I was in a sorority well I was a dancer growing up so it's like all my dance friends and then a sorority is like exactly the same the sorority life sounds insane I've never met a sorority girl really (laughs) it was it's exactly what it sounds like too it's literally like it's so crazy and honestly toxic and looking back on it now I'm like I was in a cult oh really you think it was toxic it was like yes and no. It's good for a lot of things. It teaches you a lot. It's supposed to like help with like being an upstanding like woman and stuff like that. But also, you're living in a house with sixty girls. Of course, it's going to be like really toxic. What was the most toxic thing that happened? I don't know. I feel like it's like a lot of comparison and competition, especially like mm. there were girls who like had so much more money and were so evil to the girls who didn't and stuff like that. <gasps> really? Yeah. It was and a money it's thing. Very, like mm. it's very choosy. Like recruitment like when you have you ever seen like recruitment tiktoks yes like the bama rush (laughs) it's so much more insane than like you even know like i was on the recruitment team and there's like two thousand girls who come through um recruitment on the first day before anyone even walks in the door you drop a thousand girls because you've gone through their social media you find out if you want them or not and they're dropped before they even walk in the door based on what just the way they look just like followers yeah yeah just like super very superficial things and it's it's horrible to watch and like and you'll seek out girls that like you want if a girl's like really pretty and rich and like whatever mm. you want her so like you'll make sure the prettiest richest girl gets her in recruitment oh interesting so they don't to her. look at it as like competition to me I'd be like mm, I don't want the pretty girl because she'll like take our men no because you because you want to be like they the whole thing is like wanting to be the top house so you want to have like the prettiest girls oh. it's so so stupid that's but so interesting at yeah. the time they, they convince you that it's like something like positive and it's like you want all the best like most upstanding girls around you but it really it's like a 
competition. Wow. Okay. So, were, did they ever do? What is that called when they like? Her, it's not harassment, but it's like bullying, hazing, hazing. Yes. We didn't get hazed. No, the girls don't do it. So sororities don't really do it. It's more some of, some do. Ours didn't. Thank God. Okay. So it was the never bo- like the boys definitely haze. Because I was like, there was like a horror movie of like a sorority, and they would like put stuff like over their head or like cut their hair or like suffocate them. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard like terrible stories about them like circling fat on girls and like <gasps> so nothing like that ever happened no okay thank god that's good I guess <laughs> but yeah so I had girlfriends obviously in my sorority and then I still have all of those friends like wow and came here and I met like I was at catch with all girls same situation I've always been just around a lot of girls mm, okay so you're like always been like a girl's girl Kind of. I mean, I, I'm i like, see, that's a pick-me thing to say. I'm like, I'm just a girl's girl. No, to me, that's the opposite of pick-me. I would be a pick-me where I'm just like, I never like girls. They just don't get along with me. Like, that's what I think is a pick-me. I think like a, someone who's around girls is not a pick-me. They're like a girl's girl. I don't know. I just love, like, I love girls. Yeah. I, I had I, sisters. I'm like, I just loved girls. That's so interesting. I guess it's like secure. I think I was just always very insecure. I always thought in my mind that like if I was friends with girls, like, I could never get a guy or my boyfriends would want to cheat on them or something like, I don't know. I definitely had that. Like I've had friends that I'm like very jealous of, like that, the friend I was Mm -hmm. talking about earlier, like the beautiful one who who would bring me around. Like I was so jealous of her because every guy, like she was immediately like the one. That would be hard to be friends with because I was like, I don't think I could be because I'd be like, no one will look at me. It was. I'm like, she's not my friend anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Did you talk to her now? No. Oh, really? I lost her. Wait, why? Because of that? Because of that, literally. Oh, interesting. Not, well, not just because of that. There yeah. was like a lot of things. But I love pretty girls. I get really intimidated. Now it's like, and I'm older and it's like not as much, but when I was younger, I was always intimidated by pretty girls. I was like, oh, they're so pretty or skinny. I was like, oh, they're skinny. I don't want to be around them. They're just, you know, just comparison. It's always I, me. I, I was like that too. I was yeah. Like, but you always so were sweet. thin. Like I look back at your old pictures when you were in college and. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I just used to like struggle with it a lot more now. I'm like. I mean, I lost the breakup weight and I'm like, so what thank th- God. Interesting. Cause I know you were saying you don't like sometimes when people comment on your weight loss. No, I don't mind it at all. I just, a lot of people were like accusing me of being on Ozempic and like, oh, that is the craze right now. In the beginning, in the beginning I was like, oh my God, thank you. Right. And then like the more it happened, I'm like, okay, like it's annoying. Cause I know when I saw it, I was like, oh my God, you look great. And then I saw something where you're like, oh, I don't really like when people, I'm like, get it. Cause it's like, you no, lost in a bad way. I, I know that everyone means it like nicely. I have, yeah. I've had people though, kind of like imply that I wasn't pretty before or like Mm. I had a friend tell me like oh I don't even want to go out with you anymore and I'm like (laughs) I guess it's like nice what does that even mean (laughs) like like yeah as if I used to be like so easy to stand next to and now I'm not like kind of thing and I was like that's kind of like backhanded no definitely the implications of it I think in general like when people comment on people's weight loss it can be triggering for people for that reason it's like you're only valued if you like lose weight you know Yeah, that's the problem is you Mm -hmm. like that's your biggest fear like is that like people don't like you as much because you're heavier, and then as soon as like you're validated in that, it's like oh shit. Yeah, but it's now just I'm the terrified. World. Like I'm like if I gain the weight back, is everyone going to be like okay? Well, yeah, and people will. People are so judgy. I mean, obviously, I know every time I gain weight, everyone's always saying that. But I always think about that. I'm like, God, if I lost like 150 pounds, everyone would be like, oh my god. Like you know, you're just like raised on this pedestal. You know, That's so str- I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like I never noticed people's weight. That's like what I would try to tell myself. Like when I was so sick over it and like wanted to lose weight so bad, I'm like, I don't ever look at somebody and I'm like, she's a fatty. Yeah, in general, I definitely don't. I definitely don't look at people. I feel like that it's way. such a personal thing. Like mm-hmm. you just like only really focus on yourself but like but then like you said the re- my reddit when I was looking at it was all just like she's disgusting and fat like everything was just she's fat she's fat look at her angles here she's I'm like oh my god it was that like, is so things. insane to me like I yeah. cannot because I'm like it's very obvious it's not like a thing but I but that would be like my trigger for sure that's why I had to stop looking it was like three months ago I completely stopped looking at any comments like reddit anything that I have Moses moderated and honestly it like changed my life my whole life just th- good after good after win after win started happening when I stopped looking at that stuff yeah it's it crazy. is like it's hard too because like especially like talking about canceled and stuff I feel like I start to adapt to like what the comments say yes. so if they're saying I'm like doing this too much I'm all of a sudden acting different and I'm thinking about like what the perception is going to be mm-hmm. instead of just like being my actual self and so I'm like I'd rather just not read it and like behave Definitely. how I want to behave oh my god I didn't even know Reddit I did a podcast a couple years ago I didn't even know what Reddit was and um, I wish so badly that I didn't know I what Reddit no was I had no idea I didn't and I guess maybe it's changed over the years like snark Reddit and stuff but then like after that podcast I started looking at it and I was just like oh my god this was happening the whole time but I'm thank god I didn't know because it's just better to like and now too I try not to read anything about it because I'm just like okay I just like have fun it's yeah I haven't deleted way. right now I haven't been on there in a while but I I do struggle with it a bit it's like it's my 
guilty, like, I know this is going to hurt me, but I want to do it. Don't do it. Oh my God. If you can, if you can go like a month without, I swear it's like life changing, even though you don't believe in like all that stuff. I really I'm going think to, I have, I literally have the, I am sober app and it just says Reddit at the top. Good. good. <laughs> and honestly, that's the best way I know when I was sober, I was like August 25th was the last time I looked at it. And I was just like, honestly, I feel so much better. Like life changed completely. Like gonna, my mental health. I'm going to do it. Cause Trisha told me to do, do it. it. I'll do I anything t- Trisha says. I promise you, <laughs> I promise you it works. I know I'm very like spiritual now and stuff like that, but that's like the one thing. If you like, don't look at negativity. Like it doesn't exist. Yeah. And bad energy breeds bad energy. Yeah. I feel like it's just going to bring more negative into my life. You start thinking about stuff or you start thinking this and it's, it's, it's absolutely the worst thing for you for sure. I know it's, mm-hmm. and it's hard. I'm, I'm, we are so similar in so many ways. And that's like one that's, of my worst. It's like a compulsion. I literally can't mm-hmm. stop myself from doing it. It's yeah. the same thing as the eating. It's the same thing as the like texting my ex. It's like, I cannot. Yeah. I don't want to do it. But then when you but can't stop it, I know. I mean, there's certain things I still can't stop like the eating and the spending and stuff like that. But that I was able to, and it's like, you know, baby steps. <laughs> Thank God. I'm like, I'm going to stop. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it will, it will, it'll change your life. What do you do now that you're off tour? What do you, what's your day to day life look like? Um, just honestly, like I'm, I'm trying to focus on the YouTube thing. I love YouTube. That's my favorite platform right really? now. So I'm like, I, I honestly, you wouldn't think so. Cause I op- upload like one vlog a month. <laughs> I just love it. I like, I love vlogging. I like do a lot of that now. Um, wow. So you vlog, oh, that's, vlogging is very difficult. So you vlog every day or? No, I just honestly vlog as, as interesting things are happening. And then I take care of my cat. Oh my God. What's your cat's name? Murphy. Cute. She's so, have you seen Interstellar? No. What is that? You you would love it. Is it a movie? I don't know. It's nothing. a movie. It's with Matthew McConaughey, who's another one that I'm just so sickly obsessed with. It Wait, makes me really? sick that I would never marry him. Is he married? He's married. He's oh. in, in like he's in one of the longest standing relationships in all of Hollywood. Oh dang! And he has like beautiful children. He yeah. makes me want to die. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, not him then. But best movie ever. It's and his daughter in the movie is Murphy. Interstellar. What's it about? It's um. Oh God, it's like kind of hard to explain, but it's is it space? basically, yeah, he goes to space. Mm. I know it doesn't sound interesting, but yeah. it's the most crazy ending in any movie ever. Are you, can you watch a long movie? Or yes, do you ha- I can. Oh, but space movies are hard for me to watch, but I can, but it's, he's so hot. Can you give me the spoiler? So I know I like to know a spoiler. Well, it's like spoiler alert. Fast forward two minutes. Cause it's new. I don't even know. Like, time passes differently when he's in space. So when he gets like back, his daughter is like 99 and it's just like, it's, oh. it's horribly sad. And like, but the actual like premise of the movie is so <laughs> crazy. You have to see it. Okay. I'll watch it. If you tell me to, cause honestly I like to watch movies. I just don't know any, like, I don't have any. That's my ones. top, like my favorite movie of all time. Actually, second favorite movie of all time. What's your first? The Greatest Showman. <laughs> what? Are you a musical girly? I'm that musical girl. That I Just saw, that one. Trisha, I saw that movie six times in theaters and then I made the PowerPoint and I came to LA. We, I literally, that was why. <laughs> what was your PowerPoint? You're like, I want to be in this movie. I want to yeah, date I these saw people. It and I was like, I, this needs to be my life. Like I am not supposed to be a nurse. I like, I, I'm joining the circus. Oh, you actually wanted to, I thought maybe well, you no, wanted not, to be in a movie. Not, not, yeah. I wanted to be in a movie, but like, okay. I was, I was so fascinated <laughs> by that movie. I was like, I would do anything to have like been a part of that because it looked so fun to me. And I was like, I have to go. Greatest show. I am obsessed with musicals and I like, you didn't like it. I love the TikTok sound. So I was like, let me watch it. Cause I was like all into the TikTok songs. But I, well, maybe because you're like more well versed in musicals. Like that was my only <laughs> musical know. that I watched. So I was like, I love this. What? Who? What part? What was captivating to you? Hugh Jackman. I just. Oh, uh, he's single just, now. I think he just got divorced. <gasps> Yay! After like just forty years, <laughs> he's, he was married for like a really oh, long no. time, and Did he just you got see, divorced. I just saw he was at. Um, the game with Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. Yes, I'm like, I don't what understand. are you doing there, Wolverine? <laughs> and like Sabrina Carpenter and him. And I was like, this is very odd. What a strange group. N- no, Hugh Jackman. He, I was never a Hugh Jackman girly though. Like he was in like Les Mis. And I just, I don't know. I don't really. Really? What's your know. favorite? You were, you're a Hamilton. You love Hamilton. I did love Hamilton, but that was like a phase. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think I go through phases. I go through a lot of phases <laughs> you know, too. Yeah. I think I go through different things. It's kind of just, I don't, and I don't even know where they come from. They just kind of come, you know. Do you have a favorite musical at all? Oh, um, I mean, oh yeah. The, there's one, it's very obscure. It's called Joseph and the Amazing Technical Dream Coat. It's called what? <laughs> Joseph. You just did your own reading fast. <laughs> I know. It's very long. <laughs> Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dream Coat. It's kind of like a Bible musical. That's Sorry, Donnie Osmond. It's very obscure. It's not bad. It's, it's Andrew Lloyd Webber, but I mean, Wait, Osmond, like, that's like Mary Osmond. Marie Osmond, Marie, yeah. Marie. Do you know her? How do you know no, them? No, but my grandparents. They, my grandma loved. <laughs> Donnie and Marie. <laughs> my grandma loved them and loved Michael Buble. Oh, 
Oh, <laughs> that seems about the era. Yeah, when I go to Donny Osmond, I just had him on the podcast when I went to his show. Oh it's my god! Yeah. yeah, he was my dream. He's he's actually my dream guest, and I've met him multiple times. But to get them on the podcast, oh my god! Now wait, now who? If yeah. you could have anybody in the world, who would you have? I mean, I got, I literally, Donnie was like my number one, but yeah, probably now, now I'm in the weekend phase. So the weekend, the weekend, we're getting, we're getting the weekend on the podcast. <laughs> he doesn't come. do any podcast. He never does interviews or anything, but I really Ugh, like him. So st- I hate when like no one does anything and then you see him pop out on like, on, like call her daddy or something. Oh, or like, like Bobby Altoff, he'll probably be on next. That's like, I'll, I'll probably just die. <laughs> oh my God. Do you think that like, not that I'm wishing for her to, um, <laughs> not succeed but right. do you think that that's sustainable or do you think she's gonna was- oh yeah I'm kind of I'm the worst person to ask for this I'm a little bit of a hater like I, I know that I'm a hater because I'm like <laughs> I'm jealous hater too. yeah I, I know when I hate I'm like super jealous of someone so um but but if like I'm really trying to like take like the goggles off like mm, I don't know I don't I really don't get it which is why maybe I'm like really upset about it because I'm just like I don't get it like I just don't the get only it. reason I feel weird about it is because like I started like I, I loved them in the beginning and now I'm like I'm getting a little bit like tired of her character because yeah. she's I saw her on a podcast where she's actually being herself mm-hmm. and like speaking and stuff and I loved her personality but it's like I can only see somebody like make someone feel awkward for so long I feel like and that's what it is I think the shtick gets like old like you're like how much money do you have you know like just, it kind of gets old and I don't think she I, I don't know because she, she did one with Scarlett Johansson did you see that one I haven't seen that it's one it's not out yet but they were doing clips on X and um she was like really nice to her and she, it was a very opposite it was very she was very oh. into it very like oh I love your hair let me fix it like she was a different character completely so I was like I wonder if she's oh, maybe pivoting. she's having to like pull out some different but people characters. were like well okay it's a woman so is it just oh. men that you're being uncomfortable with which is like you know people's the whole thing is very weird maybe I just like I feel like anytime someone gets like really successful really quickly it's like a little scary yeah oh oh I would never Except for want maybe that. like Charlie D'Amelio yeah well oh my god I never see her anymore oh, she's okay I was like so mean to her when I was like um, back in the day I don't know like for no reason <laughs> honestly you know what I'm mean for no reason all the time oh my, but no, Charlie's so- <laughs> Charlie's so cute to me I just think she's like I love her now I haven't seen her I know she had like perfume and Alta, I bought it. I was like, yes. And I know she's dating Landon Barker. And I was like, yes. And Addison Rae, I'm like obsessed with it. And I was a hater for so long. <laughs> obsessed with Addison Rae. Addison I, think I, the best. I think I genuinely scare her. I saw her the other night and she like said hi to me, but I'm like, I know that she thinks I'm weird. I talk about her all the time. Wait, really? I love her. And maybe she just thinks you'll talk like about her on the podcast. You know what I mean? Cause she I seems, do, but I'm always like, I love her. Oh, you're like sweet about it. I feel like me. She's like, oh my God, this old ass woman just talking about me. Like she's just like, she's like everything I want to be. Her music is actually so good. It's like know, such I a bop. Like, I remember a couple years ago, she compared herself to Britney Spears and everyone's like, oh, you'll never be. But I'm like, I honestly think she's like the next Britney Spears. She has like that Louisiana or Louisiana like yeah. charm, first mm-hmm. of all. And then like her paparazzi photos, she'll be wearing like Crocs and like <laughs> so good. a dress. And I'm like, I, she looks amazing. No, she's great. I actually really love her. I love I love all the TikTok girlies. Is Charlie making TikTok still? Like, is she still mm-hmm. out? Oh, okay. She is. They're doing their show. They have their Hulu show. Oh, oh yeah. I see it pop up. That's pretty good for them. Would you ever do a show? No. I'm not interesting really? enough. I really am not. People always think that. You're so confused. You <laughs> need to work on your like self-worth because you are like the most interesting person in the entire world. No. I, people think that. And we'll get reality shows all the time coming to us for pilots and when we got married, when we had the baby. And it's just like not enough people, I think, because it's literally me, Moses, and that's it. It is hard. I feel like all the ones that are really successful are like the Kardashians yeah. and the Demilies, where there's like 17 people. You need friends. You need recurring characters. And it's just like there's literally... Literally no one in our lives except for us, so it's just not that I interesting. Just, I would be so interested. I feel like you're like <laughs> funny in such a unique way. Like everyone's funny. Like there's Thanks. so many funny people, but you're funny in like a like a Theo Vaughn way, where it's like you oh. have to be so smart to be that kind of funny. Oh well, and, Theo Vaughn's like another level, but, but he, I appreciate like, the compliment. But <laughs> people think like Theo Vaughn's. He has like a dumb character kind of that he plays. Yeah, you ha- he has to be brilliant so to smart. be that that funny. I recently got into him too because of TikTok. So I kept seeing him all over on TikTok. Have you met him? Did you talk him. about him a lot? I did. I met him once. Were you, are you guys friends or no? No, kind of. Like, he yeah. invited Tana and I to a show, and then he, like, came and had drinks with us after. He oh doesn't drink, so gosh. we drank, and he sat there. Oh, but my gosh. I, but he's so, like, truly that character. Wow. Like, that it was, I almost Wait, in felt, real life? Yes. So I, like, almost felt, like, weird when he left. I was like, did, did he like me? Did he not like me? Like, Oh, my what? God. How crazy. Was it easy to talk to him? So is he, like, in a character, I guess? No, he's just, he was just very, like, uh, so where, like, where are you from? Like, very just, like. Is he funny or just? He's, he's very funny, but I just. I felt awkward. Oh my god! Maybe you're going back into your stand-up comic era. Of I know. I wish I had the biggest crush on Theo Vaughn ever. Yeah. 
Uh-huh. Doesn't he has like I don't know much about him, but I think I saw something he has like mental health issues too. Like he takes breaks for his mental health. I'm attracted health. to mental health issues. Yeah, apparently, which is not, but that's a good thing because then you can understand each other's. Yeah, that's I, I, I don't it. keep any company that doesn't have mental illness. Yeah, because they to find someone who doesn't have it, and there's a lot of people who like are like normal or what do they call them? Like there's something like whatever. But um, you have to find someone that like understands it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I feel like it's it's nice friends and partners I feel like should have some level of understanding yeah that was really hard like my last relationship he just was a denier so he was like you're crazy well he was a different level of crazy he definitely had something wrong with him (laughs) I'm like calls coming from inside the house I kind of feel bad for him. I kind of, in a way, I feel bad for him because, like you said, there must be something so deep. Like, I do, especially lying. Like I, when I was younger, I lied all the time. I was a compulsive liar as a, as a kid, and there is something like wrong. It's like a hiding, like trauma. It's like stuff that I like disassociated from, and there was like so much like trauma happening that I didn't even realize it. And I just started lying to like about little things that didn't matter. I like, would lie too. I, mm-hmm. I used to lie like all the time about like like I would do a vision test, and they'd be like, "What." Like letter is this, and I'd be like orange. Like what? I was so I was I wanted attention so bad. I'd be like, oh my god, I think I broke my leg. Like I don't know what it was, but I was lying about like the dumbest thing. That is so crazy. Same. I just was telling him this. I have the worst eyesight now because I used to have perfect eye vision, and I would purposely mess up the test so I could get glasses, and I would just be Honestly, like, Honestly, <laughs> I think that's really common. And every time I say it, like Tana makes me feel stupid about what? it, but I'm like, that's so. People always like people would go come to school with knee braces on, and I'm like, I know your knee's not hurting. That's oh oh all the time. I would always get the the little splinters at like the pharmacy or whatever. And I'd be like, Oh, my arm is sprained. 100%. I don't know where that came from, but it's like, it had to be the pick me. Like I need attention. I always loved when people came with like casts. I was never brave enough to like throw myself down a hill to get a cast. But I always <laughs> me neither, wanted but to. I wanted to. I was so jealous of anybody who got like oh. seriously injured. Yeah. Oh like, my God. <laughs> Should have been me. Everybody would sign their cast. And I was, I was so jealous of that. That's so interesting. And I vision there, too. There has to be something behind that. If a lot of people were doing it, I mean, you're like one of the first people I've heard that's actually said that. So I was like, wait, I used to lie I know, about people that too. Don't admit to it. It's the same way. Like no one wants, you know how everybody says like, I, I would never want to be famous. I never wanted to be famous. And I'm like, you're lying. Wait, you think so? I feel like there's some people who generally don't, like my brother has no, no but, but people who are famous, like I'm like, you, oh, there's like yeah. social media people. I'm like, okay, well then what did you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, how did you get there You wouldn't then? be on social media if you didn't want to be famous. Yeah. Because I know a lot of people don't want to be on social media, and they're just simply not on social media. Yeah, I exactly know. right. Yeah. And that, that always, like, annoys me, too. There's, like, falling into it, but then there's, like, a thing of, like, I never wanted this, but then you're, like, doing it. But it's, it. like, but you were posting 17 times a day. <laughs> like, you were, you really, really wanted it, it's and like I know, people, and it's yeah. fine to want it. It's totally normal to <laughs> it's want it. It's totally normal. And people on TikTok being, like, why are you guys all commenting about this, even though they put the TikTok, like, the one with the bartender. Have you seen her, Michelle, the bartender? Uh-uh. She talked about her husband. Like getting drunk at a bar and bringing home a guy, like bringing home someone who's they were gonna rob them, and then she got mad at everyone for being like, "You should divorce him." Like, stop commenting on my relationship. I'm like, "Girl, you put this out there." Oh, like, yeah. it was viral. People are crazy when it comes to that stuff. I'm like, "Okay, don't have to share everything." That's I what I've learned. Don't have to share everything online. Yeah, I'm trying to learn that too. I remember when I first had that little breakup, I went online and I was like, "Come with me to get cheated on for the very first time." I made a whole vlog. Oh, really? And it was like, <laughs> it was Did it so good. It did not feel good. I was no. I. I Still to this day, I'm like, why would you do that? Wait, really? Like, yeah. I've had some crazy ones. I've had some crazy crying because I had no one. So I, I love just... that. I just reposted something today with like all your little titles. It was, I love like your thumbnails oh. and your titles crack me up. It didn't help either that like back in the day that um, you got paid so much for those kind of videos. Like I would get 2 million views on a video and get like $200,000. Like you got paid so That's much so back cool. in the day. What happened and why can't we do that anymore? I know. I don't know. It, I remember it all like PewDiePie posted something and then we lost a bunch of ads and like something else happened. And I don't know. It just went down and down and down. But there was a point like I would make like five hundred thousand dollars a month off YouTube, and now it's like five thousand a month. <laughs> I missed. I missed the time. Yeah, That's that was such a bummer. It was a good era. It was like two thousand ten, two thousand fifteen. It was a good. Oh my god. I'm like, but you honestly very validating all those videos. I'm like, okay, somebody. <laughs> there are people who are this emotional. Yeah, I think that's like the good thing about just you being open, people being open about it is like, there's so many more people that can like relate and like, oh, maybe that's what I have. And that mental illness, I used to think like mentally ill people were like crazy. I was like, oh my God, you're bipolar, like you're nuts. You Me know? too. But and especially growing up around it so much, I was like, I don't want, I don't want to be that. When yeah. when they, when I first got diagnosed BPD, I was literally like, I'm like, that is not true. Yeah. Like you don't want it <laughs> like to be that like, that's not me. not true at all. But what year was it? Do you remember that you, when you found out? I think I was like 18, 17 <gasps> or 18. Oh, you were young. I was younger. So, the, and it was years that mm-hmm. I was like, nope, that's not true. Right. Yeah. And then it was trying. the breakup where I was like, okay, wait. Did you go to therapy or anything or how did you? I have. I've gone, I mean, 
to a lot of therapists, but I don't really, I've never had like good experiences with therapy. I was that way too until I was like 31 or something. Yeah. Are you doing therapy now? Yeah. Uh uh-huh. I do DBT. So those are like group classes, which are really great. You go once a week and they're amazing. Oh, like really? I like it better because you don't always have to talk either. You don't have to share. And it's just other people with uh, borderline and they just all talk about their, you know, weeks. I need to go. Yeah, DBT. They look them up. They're so good. And it like changed my life, actually. It's like so good. But I was the same way. Like, I never liked therapy. And I couldn't find a therapist I liked. It didn't help me. Me neither. Especially like when this last year, when I was like really going through it, I went through like seven different therapists. Mm. And all of them were, I finally found one I loved. And then she like, they changed the rules where you can't practice out of state anymore. So she couldn't, she had to break up with me. Oh, no. And I'm like, how could you do this to me at this time? Oh, talk about abandonment issues. Do you have abandonment issues with your borderline? Are you someone that's like, don't leave me? Oh, yeah, for sure. That probably has like, yeah. Yeah, that and that very okay. anxious like attachment style. Interesting. So that makes sense then why like breakups could feel like the end of the world to you. I, oh, the world was ending. Yeah, <laughs> that's the most common trait I think with borderline people is, is that friends too though. Like I I like really really mm-hmm. get like very overwhelming with friends. Really and, like attached to friends to where they'll be like, please relax. Oh, interesting. So what does that look like? Because I've never had that with a friendship. So like, who would you say you're attached to? Like Lila. Yeah, well, Lila, that's probably, like, healthy. I've had just friends where I just, like, want them around me all the time, and I get so upset, like, when, if I'm not invited to something, I'm like, oh, my God, like, everybody hates me. Oh, wow. And they'll be like, you are too much. Really? Have you ever had friends, like, break up with you? Be like, you're a lot? Yes. Oh, man. That would be the, me as, like, I hate rejection, so I'd be like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, I should never have been, yeah, that's the worst. Yeah. Oh, do you deal with rejection okay? Um, yeah. Okay, so you're, like, it's fine as someone doesn't want to be your friend anymore. You're okay with it. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't want to be friends with anyone who doesn't want to be friends with me. Well, that's the lesson right there. That's what I should have learned a long time ago. I just like cling to so hard for people to want to like me. I'm like, please be my friend. I do. I just, I I am like very much, I really want people to like me. That's probably like why the Reddit thing hurts so much. It's like, I really get sad when people don't like me. Yeah. It's just weird. And that's just weird. The stuff that they pick on you for Like she hates Dan. Like just stuff that's like not real. At least pick on something that's like real. Yeah. Or it's like, a lot of people are like, she's boring. And I'm like, okay, well, I mean, if, if, the, especially because it's, T- it's Tana's audience. So it's like, if you, oh, yeah. uh, you're used to that and like, they love her. And of course she's so entertaining. Like she's the most entertaining yeah. person in the world. So I'm like, of course I'm going to look boring. Like, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with the comparisons? I see that sometimes in the comments too, like the comparisons of you two, just in that regard, because you guys are just so opposite. There's not really a way to compare you because she's yeah. so wild and she, out there. Yeah, but she's so fun and she's such a good, like funny, like storyteller and yeah. stuff. So I am like, I'm jealous of her in that sense, but mm-hmm. like, I don't mind being compared because it's like, yeah. we, are, we are so different. Yeah. Yeah. So those kind of comments, you can like brush off a little mm-hmm. easier than like a pick me comment. Yeah. What's the one? Well, maybe we should talk about it because then they'll like do it. But is there one like for me? It's my weight. If they uh, like that'll hurt me forever. Even if I know yeah. I'm bad, it just hurt me forever. Mine's is there one? Just really? like annoy. I hate being called annoying. Really? Because I because I feel annoying. Oh, so like that's... when someone's like she's so annoying, I'm like you are right. Wow. I mean, to me, annoying is just like what everyone gets called. Everyone, I get called annoying. Everyone gets called annoying. Yeah, but it, it, it's always like a bigger issue. It's like she's so like all she does is talk over Tana. All she does like oh she makes God. everything about her like those kind of things. And I'm like, I feel like that. Yeah, that is like something. I get it why it would affect you, but honestly, it's something so silly. And if anything, I feel like you're like literally the best listener, which is probably why you're the best co host, best guest, because you're just so good at like listening to people. I do struggle with it a little bit sometimes because I interject. I feel like I'll lose my thought if I don't say it right then. You know what I mean? So a lot of times I'll like talk over people. I've probably done it 50 times today. I do too. Well, we're very like the same energy in that way because I'm the same way. And I had this has helped me so much learn to like listen because I will want to like talk, 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 because yeah, because you're saying something and I'm like, I have another question about that, you know, yeah. and I don't want to lose it either. Like, I also like, I struggle with this in actual, like regular conversations and on the podcast, but it's like, I really do. If somebody's telling me something, I always want to relate it to myself because I want them to know that I like mm-hmm. understand yes. them, but it comes off as like, That's, you're making everything about you. I always struggle with that too, because this is a comment I get too. I, when I used to go on the Reddit too, it's like, if someone, this is so weird. Like if someone died or something, like a celebrity, and I'd be like, oh, I remember me, like a Betty White. And I was like on a TV show with Betty White. So I'd post it. She has to make everything oh. about her. I'm like, but that's kind of like a thing people do when someone dies. It's like, you know, I remember this or whatever. So I think, I, I think I don't get why it's bad, but I started correcting myself too. Cause I used to always do that too. I'm like me too. That happened to me. And I, I guess I get why it's bad, but not really. If someone could relate yeah. to me, I'd want to hear why they yeah, relate. I, I do. I do want to understand, like, especially when you're going through something bad, I want like somebody to feel like somebody knows like yeah. what happened, but 
I guess there's an easy, a better way to do it than me just being like, well, at one time I had this happen. Yeah. I do. I used to do the same thing too. I have to really like watch myself cause I'm very much that person too. Cause it is a way to like relate, but yeah, I feel like it, I'm, we're getting better probably. I feel like the more, the more I podcast, <laughs> the, like it helps. I can watch it back and be like that was wrong. You should yes. not have said that. <laughs> yeah. Do you watch yourself back? Sometimes. Yeah. Well, I watch them I back because we do a lot of cuts from our podcast. Oh, you, I can't, I can't watch it. Well, again, I have Moses watch it. I can't watch anything. Like, really? I, oh my God. He'll put it on in the, in the car sometime to like monitor comments. And I'm just like, turn it off, turn it off. I hate hearing myself Aww. so much. I don't know what it is. I'm like, like I have you playing all day long. I mean, Murphy loves it. <laughs> <laughs> Murphy's Aww. watching you right now. Oh my God. Wait, is Murphy by himself? Is it her or him? Her. Herself? She's by herself? Mm-hmm. Can cats watch themselves? I don't even know. Oh yeah. You can leave cats alone for days. I won't. Cause I just feel bad for, for her. For days? How do oh, they yeah. eat? Well, you can do like automatic feeders or just like leave enough food. She's like, she's pretty good about her um, regulation. She can, she's not an overeater. I was going to say, why don't they just eat all the food that you leave out like in one sitting? Some definitely will. Like some breeds, like you can't do that. My, I had a dog die from obesity because my grandma had dementia and she would just feed it over and over and over again. Oh no. He died of obesity? Yeah. (gasps) And she would, she was so cute. She would like make pancakes for him. Oh. Or for her. She was a girl. Can dogs eat pancakes? No. Oh no. Or like a bowl of cereal. Oh no. That's so (laughs) sad. Oh my God. It was cute. Did did your cat... This like, are you a person that's like thinks of your cat like your child? Is it like yeah. I got her like when I was really going through it, so I like I was like I need literally a reason to get out of bed and like mm. like take care of something, like have someone be dependent on me. So after the breakup, you got yeah, her. oh yeah, wow. And so now like I'm so like. I would die if something happened to her. Oh no. That's always scary though too when people get too attached to their animals. Oh, what you were saying early like when uh, cuz I'll like cry over my like the thought of my friends dying. The thought of oh. even 15 years from now, 20 years from now her dying, I'm like I will lit- like I don't know what oh, I will do. Oh my gosh. Do you like cuddle her? Yeah. She's so she's He's like the sweetie not- or sweetest like she's the best personality cat. I went online and um you can read all their personalities on Pet Finder, like when you adopt them. Mm-hmm. And I'm obsessed with Dolly Parton. <gasps> Love her. And her description said, like, if she were a celebrity, she would be Dolly Parton. Oh my so gosh. I, I picked her up the next day. That's <laughs> cr- oh, so you, you looked before you got oh, her. You're yeah. like, okay. What's with, how did you find Dolly? How did, I always am curious when young people, just, me too, I'm young to like Dolly. I discover Dolly. I'm like a big documentary watcher. So I like, I found her, I watched her documentary like so long ago and I became just so obsessed with Which her. Which one? I haven't There's seen one, it. There's one, I think it's on, I want to say it's on Netflix. Okay. A couple years ago it came out. I kind of remember. I never watch documentaries ever. Really? I think I'm like, I don't know. I get bored. <laughs> oh, I love, I, I'm such a documentary watcher. Oh, I watch everything, but I like, I'm like, see, that's a pick me thing to say. No, we it's a very common that, thing. See, that was a pick me. No. That was a pick me comment. Oh my god, no! Yeah, you're too in your head about it. Honestly, I feel like I'm the pick me in this because I'm just like I don't no. get documentaries. Like I don't like true crime. Like I'm, the, I'm definitely the person that doesn't like cool things. No, but um, I'm obsessed with her. And also, I feel like everybody became obsessed with her. Be- like, or there was like a resurgence of like Dolly fans because of Miley, because she's oh. Miley's godmother, and she was like on Hannah Montana when I was a kid. Oh my god, really? Why did I not know this? Yeah. I didn't really watch it. I think again, I'm too old for but it. But did you? Well, did you know she was her god? Th- her godmother? No, I know that perform a lot. I didn't know they were god. Oh my god, god- no, they're like mother? that's her godmother, and she's like. Oh, oh my god. So do you like follow Dolly at all? Oh, I love Dolly. Me I didn't know that was her. Yeah, I follow everything she does. I'm obsessed with her. I like, have a big old Dolly in my house. What year were you born? 96. Oh, okay. So yeah. Okay. I, oh, so we're exactly 10 years. Oh no. I was born 88. I'm so bad with math. I'm not. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> I didn't go to so college. So am I. I dropped out. <laughs> no, I literally took a first. Didn't once. take biostats. <laughs> I still have no idea what that is. I took half a semester in college, and I never took one math class in high school. So they did like an you algebra. You didn't have to take math. Mm, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I graduated. So I well, don't apparently know. not. It was the most bizarre thing. I just took a lot of gym classes. I was in like three gym classes my senior year. What? I want to go to Illinois. Wait, well, yeah. I know. I don't want to take any gym class. <laughs> I don't want to take anybody's you gym class. I wasn't a gym class person. I was always the slow one. I always just walked, but I I've was in never all them. run the mile in my entire life. I cannot run. Did you have to do it? Did you just have presidential fitness tests? Um, I think we had like something called like the pacer test where you had to, you like, had to do like sit ups and sit and reach uh-huh. and pull ups. I'm like, why do they do that to people? I don't know. What's the point? Like we did one where you had to like sit and reach and pull up and I'm just like, I don't know. And it would, I failed. And it's, it's designed to embarrass people. Exactly. The mile. Did you never run the mile? Not even once. And I I would, again, faking injuries left and right. Oh, smart. Mm -hmm. How did you do it? 
just you're just like I'm sick. I would I would have notes. I would fa- I would pretend Did you my forge ankle it? was broken. Oh. Mm-hmm. I had my mom like forge notes and stuff like that. Did your mom let you stay home from school if you didn't want to go? Mm, my grand my grandma was grandma? so like so lenient. She like let me do whatever I wanted. Yeah. I'm like, miss her. Oh, that's, I mean, that's, yeah, it's good that you had them though growing up. Cause I always think mm. like, you told me when you're telling me about your parents that were like addicts, are they okay now? Are your parents in recovery? Yeah. My mom. Um, yeah. I don't, I'm not sure. Like we don't talk about like the drug aspect of it mm-hmm. all. I'm really close with my mom and dad now, Okay, that's but good. I was, I like, it was like an adult thing. Like I became close with them as an adult, which yeah. is kind of cool. It's yeah. like a friendship. They had to like mature out of it or something. I mean, it's good that they did. You know, some people, you know, they lose their parents to addiction and stuff. So it's good that they... Yeah. I just had no, like, I was resentful for a long time. I'm, like, because I'm mad at them. I'm like, what the f***? Like, get it together. Of course. Like, you kind of missed out. Yeah. But then the more, like, mentally ill I got, I, like, understood mm-hmm. that situation better. And I was like, my mom obviously did not want to be a drug of addict. Course. Like, nobody wants to be a drug addict. And she suffered more from it than... I did. It's a sickness. Are you? Do you find yourself ever attracted? Have you ever dated someone that was into drugs or anything like that? Mm-mm. Oh, that's good. So there's no like pattern. For some reason, I was always attracted to people that were into drugs. Like I, I think because I was like, I have no, I don't know the psychology behind it, but I just always wanted to be, and I, I myself didn't consider myself addicted. I just wanted to do drugs with people who did it. I don't know what it was, and it was, it was scary know. for me. I never like enjoyed it. I think like real addicts, you know, they, they need it. It's like this fix for me. I was always like scared. I'm like, I'm probably gonna die, but I want to do it. So that's how I like. I've tried a lot of drugs, and it's like I, first of all. Why? Like, you don't know what are you gonna do? Try it once and not like it, but like, yeah, I really just don't enjoy it. Yeah, it's it's a scary thing. I, I don't think it, it my, besides Xanax, because that's like such a calming, yeah. I guess, but the stuff that you have to like shoot up and stuff that can be like so scary. Yeah, I guess I've never shot anything up, but that isn't, I wonder why that is that you're attracted to people like that. I don't know. That's why I wondered if you were, I'm like, maybe it's a borderline thing, but I, I guess am, not. I'm definitely <laughs> attracted to like people who are mentally like unstable or just like horrible. Mm-hmm. Like a lot yeah. of like narcissism, like whatever, the, whatever that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I think Theo Vaughn could be a good one though. He seems uh, stable enough. He keeps a job or whatever, yeah, but maybe don't you don't want to date. Me. Wait, what? <laughs> with you guys next yeah, week. I, I don't that know. Is, that's borderline in you. Like, he probably doesn't like me even though we hung out and he let us go to the show. I don't show. know. I'm, I'm trying to stay away from any talent these yeah, days. Yeah, honestly, because because he's so popular right now too and like, you know, there's probably so many girls that like him and it's not, I don't know. I always get like that with celebrities too. It's like, there's so much temptation. Look at like, was it Chris Talia? It's like, that's someone I would never think that would have been a womanizer player. And Really? I yeah. would, I, he gives me immediate, immediate what? womanizer. We, he's just so like, he looks like a little scarecrow or something. I just want to think that's the one girls go yeah. for. I feel like a lot of those like touring comedians and stuff, like touring artists in general, like I, I feel like there is just so much temptation. Mm-hmm. But now, now that I'm touring, I'm like, when do you find the time? That's always shocking to me too. It's always like, and also like, aren't you scared now of being exposed? Like everyone's just, t- everyone's videoing everything. I'm like, it's kind of crazy. I guess now they kind of know better. Yeah. Because and Chris- girls are just going on podcasts, telling stories. Well, that, I'm but like, that's a good thing. Like you said, you're like, you know what? If just, if you don't, don't do shitty things and then I don't talk about you, you know, don't date me if you don't want to be online or whatever like yeah, that. I had to let that go. Cause like a lot of people are scared about it, but I'm like, what am I going to do? Not talk about my life online. That's my whole job. You'll find someone ultimately you have to, I mean, they just have to be okay with it no matter what, because yeah. especially if you're open about stuff, you know, cause he was, Moses was super private when I met, but you know, just, <laughs> I just talk about people I'm with, you know, it's just what you have to yeah. deal with. It's part of the package. Unless you're off. Do you ever see yourself going off social media or going off the grid? <laughs> Uh, I don't think, so. I don't know. I don't have like a very top, like I feel like a lot of people have like a really toxic relationship with social media. I'm not like, I like it. Yeah. I think it's fun. I love it too. I couldn't see anything else. I do too. I think it's enjoyment, TikTok, all that stuff. Do you see yourself, like where's your dream job? Like what would be your dream? Is it now? Is it podcasting or? I love what we're doing right now. I feel like we're trying, like we're doing so many comedy clubs that Tan and I are kind of trying to turn the show, like not turn the show into like a comedy set, but it's like, we're focusing a lot more on like actually planning the show the same way a comedian would, where it's like, we're doing crowd work and stuff like that. So I feel like that's, if we could like do that on a larger scale, that would be my dream job. Are you guys going to take like classes or how are you going to, I don't know. We're like, I mean, funny, but we're, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. That's, it's very difficult. Like, I mean, I don't know. Cause I, I think I've tried, I tried everything. I tried stand up, and it's hard to do like a formatted show. You almost need like a creative director or go to improv classes or something. Cause yeah. it's just well, it's different. Kinda, it's unique. Cause it, it really is like just a conversation and we are, we have the same conversation, you know, five nights in a row. And like okay, each time yeah. we're making like different little jokes here and there. So we're like, 
we see which ones get the laugh and stuff. So it's like, it is like oh. comedy, but it's not. So you have the same stories each show. Yeah, th- roughly. Like okay. we'll, we'll toss in a new one and sometimes we'll, you know, someone will say something in the audience that like makes us go on a whole different tangent, but. Oh, interesting. So that is, that is like a setup then. I was like, just, I like, went up there and like winged it and like whatever happened that night or whatever. Well, I used to think that's what comedians did. Right. I, thought, I thought comedians same. just got up there and they just thought of funny things. <laughs> but then I'm, I started dating some comedians and I was like, I can't see this show one more time. Oh, we're you going to all the shows too? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. Like, uh, this, but the same joke, like mu- musicians, at least it's like, okay, a song is always going to be enjoyable to listen to the same joke 50 times. Yeah. I'm like, it's always a lot. Stand up comedians just giving kind of cringe now. I mean, not in a bad way. I just, I don't know. I think cause I was so obsessed with them for so long. I would hang out at the laugh factory. I was like someone's assistant, at the, like a comedian's assistant at the laugh factory. So I'd go oh, there really? every single night. I was like 18. It was like crazy. And I'd go there every single night and just watch comedians. I don't know why. I don't know why I was such a groupie. Like they're not like necessarily that attractive or I guess cause they were funny. But I love a funny guy. I don't care how ugly you are. If you are funny. <laughs> And most of them are traditionally not attractive. I think like Dane Cook back in the day was like the exception. Yeah, People it, it's a lot harder, honestly, for guy for like to succeed in comedy if you're attractive. I feel like I would see. Well, I don't know, but the um, tick, Matt Reif, he always talks about that. He his, does. His thing went viral. He's he like, does. I feel. I honestly <laughs> feel bad for Matt Reif because every time he every time he says anything, people just fucking go insane. Meme it. And like, it's like the message is always like good, and he means well, but yeah. like just like. It, everyone's always going to give you a hard time if you're like good looking like that and complaining about anything. There was like a men's fitness where he's like, people just don't want to laugh at a good looking people. He's like, <laughs> he's like, no one wants to laugh at a guy with phenomenal arms. <laughs> and people are like, I don't think that's why they're not laughing. And he, he was, was dead like, fucking serious. I know. I know. No, he's a, re- he honestly, he's a really good guy. He just made the Forbes list, made like $25 million last year. I'm like, he's doing just fine. That's crazy. He was just all over my FYP page. Like, oh, like it just, you had to like, like him. And I did, but then Me he gets- too. I was like a super fan. Yeah. Yeah. How did you become friends with them? Because you guys like were friends. You sat on canceled and stuff like that. How did you? Um, I I just honestly DM'd him, and then wow. he was he and he was my neighbor. He lived directly next door to me. Oh my god, what a small world. That's crazy. So yeah. you just DM, do you DM people like when you want to date? Do you DM people? Yeah. I love I it. I DM Theo Vaughn. I was like, hello. Oh, you, is that how he <laughs> knew you guys? Like how you got to go to the show and yeah. stuff? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Can I tell you? I think I've DM'd Theo Vaughn back in the day, like three years ago. And he left me on red, never saw it. I never hell? got luck with DMs. Me neither. Well, it's like, it never goes anywhere. Well, it's it sounds like, like it goes to places for you. You get invited to shows and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, but that was the end of it. I'm like short-lived love <laughs> story know. with Theo Vaughn. I'm like Mrs. Vaughn over you here. Just- <laughs> Do you, do you really like me? You think he's cute? I, I think oh. he is so... I just love a funny guy. Oh and he's f- so funny. I don't. I can't think of one person in the world who's funnier than him. Yeah, he's very just like different too. He's different than everyone else. But again, we need to go away from entertain people. Maybe like a... You said something on a podcast that you wanted like a business, like finance guy or something. I know, but then it's like, I think I'm lying. Would you be bored? Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know. I don't know. You know I've what? I've never tried it. Yeah, because I was bored. I used to date so many people like that, and I was like, oh, God, so boring. Moses was the first person I had that had like a real job. And I was like, and at the beginning, I was like, wow, this this is like boring, you know? And I tell him this, whatever, you know, the quarantine. Because, you know, but but because of quarantine, you know, I was just like, let me give it a shot, whatever. And it's just like, they do become, like, you just learn more about them. It's like not the like quick pizzazz, like fun or something like that. Yeah, but- I feel like that's what I'm attracted to is like the immediate excitement. Mm-hmm. And that's not even, that's not sustainable. Like, yeah. At a certain point, it's like you get over that and they, they, suck. Yeah. You find the excitement. I find the excitement in, oh, this person wants to know about me. This person wants to see me. This person, you know, does things like, you know, then you find the excitement in that kind of stuff. Like, and then I'm like, oh, this person's actually excited. So things I used to like laugh at him for like back, you know, he was really into water and philosophy. I was like, oh my God, so boring. This is now because I'm like, so in love. I'm just like, oh my God, actually this is really insightful. Yeah. I feel like when you really care about someone and you love somebody, all of a sudden, all the things that they're interested in, like you're interested in. Yeah. So even a finance guy, I think you could find something, you know, if he really treats you so well. Like then you start getting excited about his stuff. You yeah. Know? I honestly, I just haven't dated a lot. Like I, yeah. I literally have had one serious relationship and we know how that ended. So. Yeah. Well, you're still I need so to young. start dabbling a little bit in like some different career paths. Maybe no more, no more singers, no more comedians, no more Except Theo Vaughn. We'll just put that out, I guess, if that's going to happen. Except Theo. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Has he, have you guys probably scared of me. Ask him on your podcast. 
podcast. That's like a good way to we do it. We did try to come. We, we want him on the podcast so yeah. bad. I'm just like, I, I honest to God, I don't think I can sit across from him and have a conversation. No, like, I, he makes me so nervous. We really? Yeah. Have you talked about this before? It's so funny to hear you talk no. about it. Oh my God. I think that's so cute. I didn't know. Cause like he is so, he's popular, but you guys are too. Like you guys are like Matt Rife was on your guys' podcast and he doesn't do like just anyone's. He does like stand up comedians and stuff. I know. We, he, yeah. I think you guys have the numbers for it for we're sure. Trying, we're trying, we love having comedians cause I feel like that's the best way. Cause like I said, mm-hmm. a lot of people don't like the guest episodes. So it's helpful to have somebody who's just funny and like can add funny commentary. And like yeah. the comedians have been amazing. Like we had Whitney Cummings. Yeah. She's so you, good. I feel like you would love to have Whitney. She was like, she's amazing. Yeah. I, I love Whitney now. I think I was a Whitney hater back in the day and I, oh. we have a whole thing. Honestly, Wait, I, really? it's a one-sided thing. Oh. I was like a hater on her for some reason. And I, I've talked about this on so many podcasts that I've been on. Cause it's like, um, they had asked me to be on a long time ago. Oh my God. Like five years, four years ago. And I think I wrote back a really rude email because I thought it was my people. I thought it was my people saying something and it actually was like her assistant or something. It was like, I was so rude. This was like 2019. This is like the dark years. And when I say 2019 is my dark year, I was in three mental hospitals. I was like with so many drug addicts who are like, I was yeah. out of my mind. And so I wrote back like the rudest email. It was like so weird. And so um, I'm so glad she's like successful now, but I was a hater. I don't know. She did this but show. But you know what the best thing about you is, is that you acknowledge that you're a hater and you can like, oh that, my God. that's the thing. I'll, I'll say it too. Some, sometimes I'll just be a cunt for no reason. Yeah. It's, and it, whether it's like jealousy or whatever I'm going through that day, I'm like, you're, you're you're going to be a victim. Like, yeah, it's, I was really bad. I just was so miserable in my life. I had no friends. I had no love. Well, that's how it works. Especially like I've had years like that. I've had years of my life where I'm so insecure that I am just horrible. Yeah. Like I'm just mean. I'm like, I used to be so terrible to my like family even like, Oh, me too. My sister, I would yell at her and my mom, I would be raider. Like, yeah, my poor grandma, I was literally like, shut up. Yeah. No, that's not too bad. No, I know, but she's my sweet little grandma. Right, right. (laughs) It's like, oh man. Yeah. I feel like with that kind of stuff, it's just, but that's why I understand haters so well. And they get so mad when I say this, because when I would see haters and stuff like that, I'm like, it's so clear that they're like either jealous. Cause most of mine keep from jealousy or like, cause I didn't have a relationship or Whitney, for instance, my weird hate with her was that she had her own show. I think it was called Whitney. I think Chris Leah was on it. It was like really? on NBC. It was like a sitcom. And I was so jealous. I was, cause we we're like kind of the same age and she got to like do Roseanne, produce that and have her own show. And I was so jealous jealous of her. So that's why I always say with hate, I'm like, I know people are jealous when they hate, like they're jealous. They can't do your job or they can't be friends with Tana or whatever the case is. And people hate when I say that, but I'm like, as a former hater, I know that's why they're no, hating. I get it. I still, I'm not, I'm honestly not even a reformed hater. I'll be a hater honestly till the day I die, but I can't <laughs> I try help not to it. be, but the Bobby all talk is the only thing, but again, it comes out of jealousy. Cause I'm like, I, I should be interviewing offset. Not that I should be, but someone besides specifically <laughs> offset was so funny. Yeah. <laughs> like, that I'm, was imagining wild. you with offset is so, I would love <laughs> Nothing more than to see that. <laughs> I don't think I could interview. I would have loved to interview Maluma. I was definitely jealous. Like I really love Maluma, and I was like, damn. And she you pretty. will. I like. I honestly, first of all, just Trish is so like. I feel like your views are crazy. <laughs> oh, I'm thankful. Like I it's saw a one pendulum. like it, that was literally up for like four days, and it was at like 1.3 million. Oh and, like, my it was, god. Like, some, some, but again, the guests are always great. Like I know, like, and it's great. Like I'm honored people want to come up like Tana, like you. I mean, I'm telling you, Terry Joe, like it's cool when people want to come on because you think nobody will. And <laughs> Terry Joe episode was so Terry funny. Joe's so good. Oh my God. He's, he's crazy. I love him. He's so nice. And it's cool. Like, cause he's so big. And so when people want to come on my show or like you, it's like really neat. You are so big. <laughs> like you are literally like so oh. fucking famous. Like, no, you're, to I, me, I literally the whole way here, I was like talking myself down. I'm like, it's okay. <laughs> like I'm scared. That's so crazy because your energy is so big when you like come into like the room. Like you're so you came by yourself, which I think is great. I come by myself everywhere, and that takes so much confidence to like go alone. You know I what just, I mean? Like, uh, honestly, I do so many. Th- I love doing things by myself, which yeah. is like. I don't know. Like I prefer to do everything by myself. You were the most punctual. You came at 1059 because we can see when someone comes into our gate at 1059. I was like, <laughs> you are, so, and I love that because so many people are like, I expect people to be like, I'm just like, we're going to probably be here for an hour. And you were right on time. It was, I hate, I hate being late. I'm like, so I've so, I get so anxious about it. And like, oh, that's me and Tana's like number one oh, fight I, that we have is like, 
her making me late and me like wanting to die. How is traveling with her? Do you guys travel oh, together? We do. And that's been like, <laughs> is she like one of those people who's like last minute gets on the plane? Yeah. But also like for the shows, especially like we've had a lot of like fighting that happens because it's like our call time's like six o'clock and she's still asleep. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah. If you're so punctual and then someone's just not, I know I honestly, that would be hard. Friendship or relationship is the hardest. For it is. It's hard because it's like, I like she can't, I can't control that. I'm so yeah. emotional, but like, it's not her fault that I'm so emotional. Yeah. So she shouldn't have to suffer because I'm like having a panic. Right. That's just the way she like functions and stuff like that. So that's yeah. And so, is. you know what, that's her flaw. My flaw is being too emotional and we just have to work it out. You figure it out. So but now we good. have a system where I just go without her. Oh, I used to do that all the time. I just leave people. I'm like, I'm leaving right now. <laughs> I have to. Cause yeah. otherwise, like if I'm not just there, like I'm anxious and then yeah. it's, everyone suffers. But that's the way to go. That's definitely the way to be. I can't really do that now. Cause I have a daughter, but it's like, it used <laughs> to be like, I'm leaving by everybody. But now I'm like, okay. And now I'm later because I have a kid now. I'm just like, I'm late everywhere. Yeah, but you but can, that's a good excuse to have. Like, <sighs> And it's so real too, because it's like when you're leaving, there's just so much stuff that happens. I hate, but we are late to a lot of things now and it's just so frustrating. Ugh, but you're the best mom ever. I literally <gasps> love to see everything, Thanks. everything. Malibu Barbie. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. I love being a mom. Do you see yourself having kids one day? I God, I hope so. I really? would love to have kids. You're not like worried or scared just seeing like your own mental illness, your mom's mental illness. Were you ever scared? Of- I am a little bit, but I don't know. I just I just want a kid so bad. Yeah, I think you'll be the best mom because of it. Uh, you know what? I think that that's true always. I told Tana this too. I think that the people who like grow up in the more like turbulent households end up being better parents because... You want like you want to show up for your kid. Yeah, not, that, not to say my parents were bad, but like they were clearly going well, through yeah. it. Yeah, obviously. I mean, they I mean they had their own addictions and stuff. And Tana too. I always said that about her because she'll be a good mom because of growing up with that kind of like household and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Because I was always nervous about that too. But it's just like you almost have more empathy. Like I can understand. Like when I was a kid, I was told like stop crying, you're fake crying, stop it. Like, but now it's like now you can like ask questions like oh why are you crying? You know, yeah. which is, I also like, have such like polar like. Um, experiences like my experience with my parents because I had that you know the first 10 years and then my grandparents the next 10 years Mm -hmm. my grandparents were so like you see both sides like very just sweet understanding like Mm -hmm. versus just the exact opposite so I got like both sides and I know you can see it all yeah you'd be like such a good mom god I hope so I want to have kids like soon but we'll start with like honestly a boyfriend yeah (laughs) No, I was that way too. I always wanted to be a young mom. When I was like 25, I was like, I'm getting too old to have kids. Like, I don't, but I just don't, I don't know. I'm not jealous. I have so many, uh, so many of my like high school friends and stuff ha- are on their like third kid. That's great. I mean, that's normal, I guess. It's but normal. I it's crazy. We're, but we're in LA. So I feel like we're on a different timeline. Like yeah. everybody else is like. You have such a career like trajectory now, like to stop it would be like hard. Unless you met like the love of your life and they wanted kids like right now or something like that, then I think yeah. it would happen. Well, maybe it's a ways away. Maybe I'll have one next year. You never. No, stuff, stuff like that happens so quickly. You see someone, and you're just like, oh my god. Or Whitney, I yeah, think you she- guys, you guys got married really quickly, right? Yeah, we were engaged after like five months of dating. See, I love that. <laughs> I love that you just knew right away. I just saw you say like you said, I love you after like three days or something. Oh, I'm sure I, said I love like, you I the first so night. Get that. <laughs> I yeah. really do understand that because it's like, I just, I, like, I know. I mean, I, I don't have that much experience with it, but. No, but when you know, you know, and it's like, I don't know, like, I, if it, it, it doesn't scare off the right person because I think like, within a weekend, I was like, I want to get married and I would like break up with him if he didn't want to have kids with me right away. Like, it was very much that thing, but I think if with the right person, they'll like understand well, better, and get it. Better for them to just know so you can weed them out because if they're not comfortable with it, it's like, see you later. Oh, yeah. I think <laughs> I was watching one of your interviews and you're like, you tell people up front now what you want in a relationship. Like you tell guys. Well, I have to. Like, like I was kind of telling you about a little relationship that I had. Like I wanted to stay with that person so bad, but I needed them to be more like active in my life. And I had to say it because I'm like, if I go through another breakup, I will die. Mm. So what did you tell them up front that scared them away? (laughs) I just, I literally just was like, if you can't communicate, like be a better communicator, like in Oh. focus more on the relationship. It can't happen. And he was like, okay, perfect. It can't happen. Uh, that's like not unreasonable. No, well, <laughs> yeah, like- no, it just, I don't know. I have to be more upfront about stuff like that. Cause it's like, if I ignore things like that and then I end up having to go through another breakup, I'm like, I can't, I don't take a breakup well. And I know that about myself. Well, you, the reality is you'll probably go through another breakup. Yeah. You well, know? For, of, course, of course I <laughs> yeah, will. But if I know, if I know before I'm even really serious with the guy that it's going to be a breakup, it's like, why am I going to put myself through that? Right. But I feel like in some way you should let your card down. Cause I know you said you're kind of guarded now, but it's like, 
you might yeah. be just scare someone off because you're too guarded, you know? And it's like, don't make them pay for this, cra- you know, the one that lied. I know. And won't call him crazy because he might actually have some issues, but he's crazy. Li- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he definitely needs help if he's I'm like lying kidding. about that kind of stuff. But, you know, don't make the next person pay for I his. Know. I, I know. <laughs> Because you saw me like date some nice guys that are like you know good and nice. I have, and, and I've had, I've dated some nice guys since, like just casually. But what happens with those? I don't know. Too busy. I don't know. Too young. One of them. I'm like, oh, for you were too young for them. No, I dated one guy who was like 22, and I was like, uh, oh, that, that's, that's not gonna work. You know what's so interesting is I never hear girls date that way usually and it's not that big of a difference 26 and 22 but it's like interesting though it's such a big difference do you feel it more because they say women mature faster than men do you feel it more yeah and it's it was just so clear and I was like that's like 22 is unsustainable who's a social media person that's 22 I'm trying to relate it is like Bryce Hall 22 Mm. or is he older I don't know I think he's a little older who's like a 22 Alex Warren is he 22 I don't know I'm just trying to think he's older too I don't know I honestly I don't know but it's just I don't yeah, know, like, I, young. I need someone, like, 30-something. I think that's a good age. Yeah, I think that's good. I don't know. You're such a, like, young spirit. I don't know. Well, I'm also, like, like an immature dater, kind of, because I'm, like, I really haven't dated much, so I feel like I, it helps me f- to date people my age or, like, around it. Yeah, so they can... Ex- I, for me, I, I didn't date much either. I didn't date much until I was like, I never lived with a guy literally until Moses. But I, um, I think it's okay. I feel like that kind of stuff, they just have to like warm up to, you know what I mean? Otherwise, you don't want to live with just like random people or date random guys. Yeah, and- especially if you don't know where they're from. <laughs> Do you know now where he's from? Did you ever figure it out? Yeah. Okay. Did you research it or did he tell you? Oh, I found his mom's Facebook. <laughs> did you reach out? Yeah, she didn't answer. <gasps> what did you say? I said so many things. <laughs> Did you I get couldn't, blocked? I wasn't there. I literally was not there. No, oh my. I was not in my body. But see, I, I feel like that's even disassociated. Even though you know, I feel like it's a little disassociated. Yeah, maybe. That's the thing. I know, like, but it's like there is literally two people inside of me, and one of them is like, do not do that. And one of them's like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're just going to do it. Oh, man. I never reached out to. Mm, I had to. No, I don't think. I had to know. <laughs> I needed to know what was up. I needed to know why are you dead? Oh, my God. <laughs> She never did she block you or anything or she just No, left? she didn't block me. Maybe she didn't see it. Yet. Oh my god. <laughs> I like messaged her after this. That would be so funny. No, poor well, guy. He like can't catch a break. I've been talking about him for a year straight. Like I was like that too. I talked about all my relationship because you know it affects you so much. And it it's is. Like, and you know, I do get comments where people are like, her whole personality is that breakup, but I'm like, Oh, I always think do that. you no, it weighs on you. It's a big story. And it's not just a private one. He's also a public person that made it public. It's a very public thing. Yeah. And it just affected me so much. Of course. No, I think you can, I think you have the right to talk about it forever. You know, if you want, you know, people, there's people deal with trauma in different ways. And yeah, I'm like, bless his heart. I'm like, stream his new song. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> did you listen to it? Did you like it? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I actually heard it. Cause we did get like, we were like talking again for a little while. Like just on like, oh. like a friendly, like I was worried about him. <laughs> Oh my god! You don't, don't worry about him. You don't hook up or anything, though. Oh no. no, I haven't seen him since I like, I like put oh. his stuff outside, and oh. I never saw him again. Does he know your new place now, like where you live and stuff? Okay, that's good. Clean start, fresh energy. Yeah. Do you when you date? Do you have people come to your house, or do you go there? Yeah, well, or do you go to houses? So know, he, he, he didn't live here, so he moved into that apartment, my last apartment, with me. Oh, like wow. we he, we he, we built all our furniture, and like we would go back. Like he lived in Vegas, so we would like. Oh, that's kind of cute, the little Vegas thing. Yeah. How about now when you casually date guys, do you let them come over to your apartment? Yes. Like right away or it takes like how many days, dates? Um, I'm uh, like one. I know, I'm just saying, like, every, every person I've ever been with is first date always. No, when people I say just they went, don't, I'm like, wow. Yeah, no, I just went on a date like a couple weeks ago and it was just first time. I'm like, yeah, you could come over. But you have a bougie apartment. I know, I always had fancy apartments. I'm like, come look at my place, you know? Well, honestly, yeah, that's uh, that was kind of my yeah. mindset. I was like, now I have this nice apartment. I'm like, someone has to come over. Oh, it's so nice. And like the lights and all the stuff you see from your balcony is so pretty. Like it's, I love it so much. And I'm just so much happier there. My last apartment had like a building right next, like it was a vaulted oh. ceilings, but it was directly next to a building. There was no light. It was a dungeon mm. all day long and I was already depressed. So I was like, that's the worst. I was at the Palazzo during my depression era and it was the same. It was by the Grove and it was a penthouse, but it was like looking like literally into like, I don't know what was there, like a Ross or something like that. It was like so dark and there was like everything was light, shaded. I did not realize how much light affects like your mental health until I didn't have it. It's such a big thing. Natural daylight is like, it changes your life. Like yeah. if you have it in your house. And having it again now, I like, I sleep with my windows open, wake up at six. 6 a.m. with yeah. the sun and me and Murph just have our little break. Oh, I day. love it. 
We do that too. We have a huge window, like a giant window, and we just like we don't have curtains on it. And people are like you just sleep like that. I'm like, yeah, because I love to like wake up to the bright Me light. Me too. And I'm such an early riser right now. I'm like going to bed at like nine and waking up at like wow. six. Wow, I'm the same way. I, I think I went to bed last night at like six thirty p.m. I was very. I love to be up at like four thirty. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. That's the mom I'm mom energy. Oh, for sure, for sure. I'm like six thirty. We're in bed. I think I fell asleep before my daughter the other night. I was just like, I'm so tired. Oh my, is she a good sleeper? Yeah, she sleeps through the night. She's really good. She usually goes down at like seven thirty. So if I fall asleep at six thirty, it's a little before. But oh my yeah, gosh, I'm so jealous. Yeah, it's so nice because I'm like, oh, we can go to bed at the same time. It's a cute thing. Are you a cooker? Do you cook? I'm starting now. My last kitchen was like. I just didn't want to cook in it. So now I'm like not allowing myself. I used to post me three meals a day. Oh my God. Like f- for a year straight, I post me to three meals a day. And that's first of all, financially <laughs> so stupid. It's so expensive. It's so expensive. Like the, the dash, like the driver, the tip, everything is like yeah. so expensive. And the delivery so fee. I've been cooking now. I'm like dipping my feet in. I'm not very good at it. What do you cook? Right now I'm, I'm only on breakfast. Okay. okay. I'm working, I'm, I'm working my way down. You have to start somewhere. <laughs> so it's like bacon, eggs, bagel. Oh, yum. But next is lunch. I'm like, I'll keep you posted. What are you going to cook? What's your a sandwich. <laughs> like a peanut butter sandwich. No, we do. I just, sometimes, I'll have like my manager come over and she like, she really cooks. So I'll like just watch her and be like, one day I'm going to be able to like slice a tomato. Yeah. I never could cook either. And I was like 33 when I started cooking. I was like, oh, you're into it now though. I, I see, I see your like cooking. recipes. I think you did like a... Oh God, what was it? <laughs> Everything you eat looks so good. I just good. do mostly pastas. <laughs> I love I've a, always pasta. Been a pasta. That's, that's so something good. I can probably touch on soon because that's like, it's mm. like an intermediate food. Yeah. Right. There's some like easy pastas and there's some complicated like sauces and stuff like that, but I love it. I mean, honestly, it's like people always say it's better to cook at home and then it's like, you don't gain as much weight, but I'm bad with portions. I cook such big portions that's, and then I eat all of them. So that's why, especially like when I did lose the weight, I was like, I got to keep it off. And yeah. if I have food, in my apartment, I will eat it. Same. So mm-hmm. for a long time, I couldn't buy. I didn't want to buy groceries because I was like, I can't. If it's there, it's getting eaten. Yeah. So we go every day to get just the ingredients we need for our dinner. Oh, because that's genius. I had to tell him. I was like, I will. And I, you know, like I'll eat the whole Oreo box, like the whole potato chips. Me too. Like, I can't. Yeah. There's no. Yeah. There's no. That's that's a compulsive yeah. a compulsive situation. Yeah. Um, all or nothing. <laughs> that's what they do in Europe, though. That's why their little appliances are so small because they like literally just do, they can only buy food for one day. Oh, but that's smart. And then yeah, it's fresher. And it's fresh. Of course, they they like pick a tomato out of their garden. Oh, where would you live if you weren't living? in the United States or California. Ooh, um, I, f- I would love to live in like, well, that's in the United States, but like Montana is like the most beautiful state. Oh, that's so random. It's so What's beautiful though. I don't, know. I don't know. I'm really in like the like horse green era. Okay. Like I'm like, so obsessed with that. All the TikToks of people in like open fields. I'm like, wow, I haven't seen that. I could see that life for you. I would love to like have horses. Somewhere. Are you? Were you a horse girl growing up? Like, did you ride? No, honestly, oh. I've never even <laughs> touched a horse. What is it about it? They're just like my upset. Like I'm obsessed. I actually did. I touched a horse last weekend. But oh, where on tour? At a I, my friend has like the craziest ranch. <gasps> maybe you should date a rancher. You I should know. go. Do well, you I actually, s- I'm currently like half seeing a man who has horses. So wait, is he here or is he somewhere? He's else? here. <gasps> I can love that. Yeah. Where's but that gonna go? How's that going? It's probably not going anywhere. He just got out of like a very serious relationship mm. way too recently for me to be comfortable. Yeah. So well, you can just have fun, I but guess. It's fun. So he has like a ranch with horses? He just I don't know. I'm not sure. He oh. has horses. You just saw it like on his He ta- he like talks about them. Oh. <laughs> but you haven't seen him in prison. Maybe he doesn't have horses. <laughs> Like, where does he like, live does, that he has horses? Honestly, does he have horses? Isn't that awful? You have to, like, think about that now with people because of that last relationship. You're like, is yeah. this real? Yeah, it, it really is scary. Like, you don't realize how many people are just lying about things. So many people lie. Do but you, also, that was really, like, a very unique circumstance. Like, nobody faced yeah, the death of their I've never family. had something like that happen in my life. Do you... I see that your Instagram bio is your credit score is 813. Is that real? That's real. And that wow. is... I was just listening to you talk about credit and, like, how you... Um, I have horrible credit. I I'm like 600. <laughs> I don't even have a credit card, so that helped. Like, you never well, did. I I do. My grandpa, he's like the sweetest little angel. He has a credit card in my name that he use, pays for things oh, and pays, pays it off, off on time. So my he built my credit for me. I mean, that's like 850 is like perfect, right? Is that a perfect credit score? I'm not sure. I don't know. Something my, like that. Mine's probably a little credit. lower now, but 
It's it was eight thirteen last time I checked, and I'm not checking again. Wow, because I saw that on your bio, and I remember I used to go on dates, and people always asked me my credit score, and I was like, that's such a weird thing. <laughs> oh, no one's ever asked you your credit score. No, I guess it's in your bio. They know. Oh yeah, they already know <laughs> it. Eight one three, because that's so important. When I met him, and he had a perfect credit score, his was like eight fifty. I was just like, I was in love. I was like, oh my god, you have a perfect credit. Like it is so. Important. I just don't understand it. Like I really don't understand credit. I don't understand how it works. I. Why well, do you now? I can give you a whole lesson on. It. I didn't understand either. Now I understand. And I'm like, oh shit. Like, well, it really, it's it, it's like grades. It's like it's so easy to fuck up and it's so hard to fix it. Um, oh my god, it's so hard to fix. Mine was from when I was like 18, and it's like I'm like. It, these, that's horrible. Falls you, off, you know, you can like I had the only like real problem I ever had with my credit was a medical collections from when I was like sixteen. And did it fall off or did you fix it? I have no idea. I think my grandpa probably fi- he he does all of that. Aww. He's like he's so sweet. Oh my god, I love your grandpa. He re- like he is really the best. Like he'll text me and be like, "Hey, like your new registrations in the mail. Like I did this for your car. Like just Aww. out of nowhere, he's so like the most thoughtful person in the world. Yeah, I feel like you need to have your expectations so high for your husband because like he needs to do that energy for you. You know, like taking care of your he bills no. And- he literally. Ugh. Um, I feel like I have an unrealistic standard. No, I think that's actually very normal. I think everyone has like lowered their standards because guys yeah. have been so shitty. But I feel like that's a very normal thing that a lot of people have. And yeah, it's old know. fashioned is what it is. And that's why like it's a grandparent. Like that was normal in their day. Someone's generation messed it up. It must have been like our parents' generation or something that like messed up the kids. For sure. Had you know what be. I mean? The ones that don't want you to show emotions, the ones that tell you to like be a man or you know, whatever, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Messed it up. That's horrible. The toxic masculinity mm-hmm. and the, our world is in right now. <laughs> it's just so, I don't know. You sounds like, you know what? It sounds like you're like really logical. You seem like you, for having a mental illness, you do regulate it good. You do present well. Well, thank you. You don't spiral online. <laughs> I don't spiral online, but I definitely spiral in person. That's why when you said I'm like, uh, you said in the beginning, that I was like chill. Yeah. I'm like, if you told Tana that, she'd be like, are you fucking kidding? Yeah, I guess you know I'm what? like the least chill person <laughs> That's ever. So funny. I always just think your demeanor, like you're just very like Well, I'm like kind of shy. So like I'm that way too. I feel like in the beginning, like of course I'm gonna be like, eh. Yeah, because in a group of people, we went out with, what, like 12 people, and you're just like you're just not not quite in a bad way because you talk, but it's just very much like it does not have to be the loudest. And I'm not that way either. I'm very shy. I get very shy around people. I always think if I'm the loudest, people think, oh, she wants attention. So I'm like, let me not be that way. I've never been that way though. Yeah. I've, it depends on who I'm around. I feel like if somebody else has a really big personality, I will like tone mine down a bit. I feel like there can't be two. Yeah. I feel that way so, too. Like, with my friends who are like really calm, I'm like the one who's a little bit more loud. Outgoing. Like I always want to do like the opposite balance. to balance the energy. Yeah. That makes sense. Same I, thing with like a guest or anything. Right. Who's been the, okay, we won't do the most difficult. Who's been your best guest on Canceled? Um, you, literally you. <laughs> Really? Yes. We that say that so every fun. we say that every show. Oh you my know, gosh. you don't know how much you are in our show. Like, I watch it. I do watch it. I do watch it. Sometimes no, no, no. I hear me talk in, about being like ah. in the live show. Oh, really? You're like such a major we literally there's been Trisha chance at like <laughs> seven of them. Swear I to would God. have come yesterday. I didn't know. I didn't I know. know. Well, we, come. well we're gonna do an LA show for sure. That's why like honestly yeah. we, we didn't really bring that many people out just because we're still kinda like working out the kinks. Yeah. But so like we have like, we play like a little game of like Jenga in the end and it has like crazy questions on it and they'll some of them will say like favorite canceled guest but some of them will say like least favorite person ever. Who's your least favorite person ever? Colleen. <laughs> I love, I love that well, you guys are both where, unified in that, that. Well, that's where it comes from. And then everyone always goes, Trish, team Trish. Oh, my God. What a crazy situation that was. I honestly, like, I feel bad for her because it's one of those things, too, where it's like, maybe this person has something, like, wrong with yeah, them. You that's know what the I mean? the same way I am about, like, my ex. It's like, yeah. there has to be something. And and I I feel bad for anybody who just gets, like, really badly publicly Yes, yeah, but then I also have to remind myself, like, oh, she, like, did, you know, she was, like, I with know, kids. But that's where, or, yeah, I know, I know. I have the worst guilt complex where I, like, can justify everything. I'm like, they, they must be mentally ill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a really bad way. It's when you don't, like, get help for it or can't acknowledge it. That's when you're like, okay, this person needs. And yeah. that's why I feel like cancellations, I think hers is more than a cancellation for sure. I don't think hers is just a cancellation. She did some really crap, crappy shit. Not to me. I'm talking about to, like, other people, gen- kids, yeah. minors, all that stuff like that. But it's like, it at least shows a mirror. Like, maybe there's something wrong with you. You know what I mean? Maybe there's something you need to fix, you know, because maybe she just didn't know for so long and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, so that's what people kept reminding me. Like, sometimes some people really, really need to hit rock bottom and you have to let them because yeah. then they learn and then they want to change things and stuff. Take accountability But I have stuff. a thing where I'm like, oh, but I don't want them to. I know. It's hard. I get the same way. I go back and forth. I'm just like, oh, man, I kind of feel bad. But then I'm like, oh, no. Then you have to remind yourself, like, no, what you the situation is. No, you should definitely is. not feel bad. As... <laughs> 
I mean, it was, it was, it was wild. I don't know. Thank God I made it through. Honestly, again, because I guess I have a baby and a husband, I kind of like was able to go through it quicker. But I think the other people that she was dealing with, it was really, really sad. Yeah. That was wild. I know. My podcast was short lived with that. That's why I was like, dang, I really wanted to get back into podcasting. No, but it was was "Mm." genuinely, I think the best thing to happen because I feel like it should just be you. Like literally just Trish. (laughs) Just Trish. I know. That's like the only name I could think of. I know. I just miss, I love this. That's why I love having guests on because I love the banter. That's why I had to have a co-host. That's why I love, I love coming to Cancel too because it's very, um, it's just very organic. It's like a conversation because I don't socialize. It is fun, but I love the episodes that are just you two also. Like, yeah, thank you. I love because, I don't know, I just want to hear your take on anything. Ever. Oh my gosh, thank you. I just I feel like I just like my social hour. I don't get out, I don't do much. I'm just like, this is my time to like see someone. It's almost it's like a, a hangout. But you know so many things, like you're so educated, you always know everything that's going on everywhere. Well, now I feel more so. I think there was a time I like didn't want to like pay attention, but now I know everything. I'm like, oh make the sound reprint. Now I know everything, <laughs> but I used to not know anything. I used to not keep up. Yeah. Especially also, social media. Well, social media, but just in general, I feel like you you're someone well, actually, do you feel like you know like a lot about or a little bit about a lot of things, or like a lot about a little, a little bit, like a few things, a little bit about a lot of things. I yeah, know that's, like a lo- about a lot of things, but just a little bit. I'm not like an expert I, at anything. But I feel like you, you're so knowledgeable about like things I've never even <laughs> like, heard really? of. Oh my god! Well, maybe pop culture. I don't think anything else. I'm actually people will say like, oh, she ask them, but there's some things I truly don't know that I'm like, I have no, no like, idea. That's that's why like I compare you to Theo Vaughn. Is like you. There's certain things that have happened, like little bits that have happened, like the thinnest layer of the earth thing. I'm like, she's a genius. Oh my god. God. Well, that's more like quick, but I still don't really know what that means. I don't know climate change. I still have to grasp like, it. But that, I'm like that, had to be a, like that had to be a joke, and she's a genius. I feel like that's just more like something quick. You know, you think up on the spot. I don't think it's like Theo. I think is very like calculated. He's very good with it. Sometimes I get lucky, but it's like you know, it's that funny where I could never be a stand up, but it's like you know, maybe I could be a little quick. No, with but stuff. well, th- th- it's night. The internet's the best place in the world because it's like you don't have to like time it out. It's like you can just yeah. And it's more comfortable when it's just you by yourself. You can deliver a little bit better. For sure. For sure. I feel more confident that way, you know, when I'm with like other people that are supposed to be funny. That's why I don't think I've ever had comedians. I had Carrot Top on here, but mostly I don't have comedians. Carrot Top scared. is so funny. He's kind of, he's funny, but he was another one that's funny in person because he's so funny on stage. I love his show and in person he's a lot like quieter and just. Oh, really? Yeah. But I saw him doing a bunch of podcasts. So I was like, let me reach out. I used to go to his shows all the time. And I, like, love I think we're, just, we're trying to have comedians because we're trying to be taken a little more serious. Like, cause we are doing yeah. like co- only comedy clubs. And I feel like comedians are like, what the fuck? Oh, do you see? Oh, right. So they see you on the lineup and stuff like that. So they're probably like, who are these yeah, people? Yeah, well, it just is like weird. Like, what are they doing there? I think that's a good way to go because also for comedians, they're in their own circle and you guys are kind of like more like social media, like you're more mainstream social media. So it's like good for them to come through too. Because mm-hmm. someone like Matt, for instance, I never watched him on anyone else's, but I watched him on yours, you know, not that he like needs the promo, but or Whitney, for instance, I don't watch her on anyone else's. I watched her on yours. Yeah. So. I feel like honestly, I didn't even really like, I loved Whitney like growing up, but I haven't seen her on anything in so long and having her on was like so cool. Yeah. She seems like she's doing good. I love her. I love her podcast because her like lights are blown out. It's, I know. And I love how like fair and perfect <laughs> oh it makes God, everybody like, look. I love it. I'm like, I need those. I, I know. Mean, I watched her. I watched her. Her Matt episode, and I was like, they are stunning. Oh my god, they're literally glowing. I was like, we need more lights. That's what I love. I love, I love this lighting situation. I'm like, I try to get more, more lights. Well, she's like, she's 40 having a baby, right? So yeah, and she's like, she's so funny about it. She's just like still dating. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, she's Fully. not with the, the no, father. I, they're like very casually together. Okay. I think they're like. They, they just weren't even really dating at the time. So it was wow. like, she, she said she was dating a woman at the time that she found out she was pregnant. Wow. She talks about that? Yeah. She, oh my God. That's very new age. I like that kind of stuff. I think it's cool. Cause I was someone who never could find someone. I was ready to have a baby on my own. I was like, I'm just going to like go get IVF or something. I, know. And- I feel like you would have been great like that too, but I'm so happy. Like your situation, I'm just literally so happy for Thank you. Thank you. I think I would have been a mess if I was doing it on my own. Uh, to me personally, because now having a baby is like, oh my God, this is a lot more work than yeah, I thought. I feel it's God. I feel for like single parents but also like I feel like if you have like family and stuff to help you or like yeah. you no. can drop them off at the grandparents but I certainly don't have that so I'm like I can't oh. have a I, I can't be a single mom well you have a lot of friends and family around you but yeah, yeah that's true but imagine me dropping my baby off at Tana's <laughs> 
<laughs> Jenna's great with actually. What are you, she's oh, pretty good yes, with babies. We, she's, someone was saying that Malibu like loves her. Loves her. It's actually crazy. Like she doesn't even want to go to me. She just wants to go to Canada. It's actually like, so amazing cute. to see. Um, she is really great with kids, which I don't know. Not that you wouldn't expect it, but like she is so sweet with kids. No, you wouldn't expect it because she's so Vegas and wild and you know crazy on the internet and stuff. So you wouldn't expect that. I was like, wow, you actually be like such a good mom. Yeah, I think so too. She holds him very naturally too. Like when Jeff was here, we like he held Malibu. He was like holding her oh like awkwardly. God, I can't even imagine <laughs> Jeff with a baby. Yeah, he was very like, how do I hold her? But Canon's very natural, like grabs the baby and stuff like that. So it's it's really interesting. But there they are a lot of work and single parents. Oh my god, that's like a whole other level. I'm like how they do it. It's like that's amazing. That's the most amazing because I could never because my mom's watching her now. Moses helps out so much, and so it's it's a lot. Yeah, gosh. But you know, when you're like 35, you've done everything, so you're just like, okay, time to have. I'm like, feels right. Maybe I'll be 35 with the baby. Oh my gosh, that'd be so cute. Where do you see yourself at 35 living here? I'm like, I want to be just like you. <laughs> <laughs> I um, would love it. <laughs> I feel like, I don't know. I mean, I don't think I'll be living, like, I won't be living where I am for sure. I, I would love to be either over here or maybe if Come I would go here. back to Arizona. I could, I don't know where I would go. Somewhere family or like where you could have a family yeah this is really great because like no one's around here there's a lot of like kid it stuff is it's so here. beautiful you guys like I'm driving through I'm like wow I don't even feel like I'm in LA it's crazy I feel like that every day and like the grocery store no one's ever there our target is like a fairy tale there's like flower arches leading into it and I love stuff. It. and it's, you know what I love anywhere that has a parking lot everything's parking it's like, so great that's what I love about Arizona is like you can yes. park anywhere you go and where I am it's like it's the worst. Yeah, that's like really difficult. And just like finding parking, parking structures are scary, all that stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I feel like if you are me in 10 years, it's like a beautiful thing because you don't worry about your exes. You don't like yeah, look hope. them up. You're mentally stable. Like honestly, it's like, it is a crazy thing. I know people hate when I say this, but it's like almost like being in love, like cured my mental illness. You know what I mean? Having stability. No, of course, because it's like, I mean, being in a, a bad relationship amplifies it so much, but mm-hmm. I feel like being in a healthy relationship would help. So much. It's like the best thing that ever happened. And it's nice to just not have to worry about like losing myself or spiraling. Or if I am, there's someone there to like yeah, catch support me. support you. Mm-hmm. I Which I think like it'll be. Moses is very understanding. He's the best. He's the absolute best. And you guys also, are my favorite couple. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. We, and we, the night we all went to have Buffalo Wild Wings, like, I'm like, I feel like we're their parents. It's actually so funny. Even though You're like, literally <laughs> like eight years older than me. I know. Oh, eight. Good math. I was try- I literally was trying to think of it ever since you said it. I was like 96. Stop it. 96, 80. I don't know those. Like six and eights, I don't know sevens and like fours I don't know I'm really bad at stuff like that yeah we don't need to know you're We're so in social good. media you're so good <laughs> that's exactly it. I was like thank god for social media because I don't know what I would be doing oh. it'd be so well I had so many notes let me see here's all my brick notes right here I had so oh my many god. notes I know honestly, you're so good at researching like god I we need to be it. better about that sometimes we people we have people come in and we're like so what do you do <laughs> Those are my favorite interviews that I love. Not just yours, but other people's podcasts when they literally like don't have the, oh, we don't, Sometimes good. we don't plan like like some of the episodes, like we talked about the Matt episode. He, yeah. he came in there and we were like, hey. like Yeah. Well, because you knew him. Like, yeah, that's true. So it's true. like more casual probably. Yeah. No, I, I think those interviews are kind of fun when not like a not just yours, other people's because it's like not knowing something about someone is exciting because I feel like I know everything about you. So, you know, hearing stories is fun. But um, yeah, if you don't know something about someone, it's cool. Although it's always funny. My favorite is when someone's like, so tell us what you do. You know, it's like, well, <laughs> what do you do? You know? Oh my gosh. Would you ever, um, oh, have you ever broken up with anyone? Well, no. The I last mean, one you yes, said. Yes, yes. But like, I didn't want to. And I should have wanted to. How did you break up? What was the breakup? Because you said you broke up with him. What was it? Just blocking yeah, him? Yeah, so we had we had gotten back together. And so he was staying at my house. All his stuff was at my house. And then I got an, like another hey girly DM that was like, hey, like he just called me yesterday. Like asked me to come over. Oh. Like literally the, that, like, the day before. And so I just put his things outside and said, so don't he was So he was living with you here because he was at yeah, my Or he house. was like, he would stay with me here. Or sometimes he'd get like Airbnbs and stuff, but I would still stay with him. Like we were always together. Yeah. How are you with boundaries? Mm, I don't really have any. <laughs> Just in real life and everything, you don't set boundaries. I'm, I'm not good at setting boundaries at all. Yeah, I need. To, I'm trying to get better, actually. I well, I'm. Yeah, I'm getting. I'm definitely getting better. What would be boundaries that you would have? You should have set maybe in that relationship that would have changed the course. I mean, he lied to you, of course, but I don't know. I like. I apologized for a lot of things in that relationship when I wasn't sorry because it was just. It was one of those where it was like. I was never, ever, ever going to win a fight. So Mm -hmm. it was just, I'd throw in the towel because I was like, I just don't want to deal with it. But I, I'm no, like, I will never apologize when I'm not sorry ever again. Or if if I don't feel like I'm wrong. Yeah. 
That's important because it's because it validates them. And he weaponized the BPD thing so much. He was very much like, well, you're overreacting. And like, obviously you do that. That's why. Uh, like, is this one of your episodes right now? Yeah. Like, yeah. And it, mm-hmm. I'm, like, it makes me like apprehensive to even tell people because it's like they do weaponize it. Like friends, too. They'll be like, well, OK, let me know when you're not splitting. And yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm not splitting. <laughs> Yo, totally. And people always do that. Like, well, she's unwell and she's this. And it's just like, no, like I'm totally fine in this situation. Yeah. And this like it, it gives them like an excuse to just like wildly disrespect to you because then they're like well she's overreacting yeah oh this is her mental illness oh this is an episode yeah it's literally yeah. the most frustrating thing yeah so I probably wouldn't have I, I would have done so many things differently in that relationship I would have like if I could relive it I just would not have ever been in that relationship it was ho- horrible all around all around there wasn't there has been some good moments for you to have missed it I guess the companionship yeah, well, I just I just was so attached to him it wasn't mm-hmm. like we all we did was fight it wasn't like a good relationship I just was so attached oh you fought a lot too all we did was fight about what just, you guys were together I, I would get in trouble for like I in trouble for things like it was just like a very emotionally abusive relationship. Like I would be at the dinner table, and if someone texted me and I turned my phone over, he would go insane. Like mm. like how dare like how dare you text while we're like eating? It's just like so, That's so weird. like things that were just so dumb that you were just overlooked because you were. In yeah. love. Or if I wouldn't text him back when I was driving, he'd be like, where are you? Who the fuck are you with? Oh, my God. And so what was it about him? Could it have been anybody that you were attached to? Or what was it about him that you were attached to if there was nothing? He was such, he was such a love bomber. And he was so... I was he like I felt like he loved me so much. So okay. I was like, and that was the first person who I felt like loved me that much. So, so from just, the start, he was like, I love he you. He was so, mm-hmm. so in it. And like, you know, flowers every day would send me food, mm-hmm. send me like just so over the top, like wrote me songs, like just... Wow. Like very, he was compensating, but like in my head, I was like, he's obsessed with me. Because that's how you are. And you genuinely feel that way about him. So you just thought. Yeah. And like, I really, really thought like, I genuinely thought like there, nobody will ever love me this much. And it just turned out he was like, that was part of his um, character. <sighs> Wild. Do you get triggered by things? Like, do you have triggers or do not really? Like, mm-hmm. is there something that could trigger you in a relationship or? Um, I feel like, well, now lying. <laughs> yeah. So that's like a big one. So if someone lies now, like you would just cut it off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also just like, I, I hate like yelling and like, like any sort of like, not violence. Cause he wasn't violent, but like yelling and screaming and fighting and stuff. I just hate, like, I hate that. Yeah. It's never necessary to me ever. So, that would so be that's a, hard... a major trigger. Cause it's like my parents were so fighting all the time like always fighting and I'm like interesting then then in that relationship you started fighting so maybe you felt like comfort or something in that where it was like well, yeah, well they fought I just, all the time oh god it was just it was like addicted like it just I was like he loves me so much like trauma bond you know what I mean mm-hmm. like when you have so much like conflict with somebody and then you come back together it's like you feel closer to the person than you actually are like you almost feel like it's passionate. What's well, like, well, if he, if we're fighting, that means he loves me. Yeah, like he's fighting I, that, for well, me. I always justify it. Cause I'd be like, oh my God, well, he just wants to spend time with me. Like he just cares about me so much, but it's like, it's, yeah. no, it's manipulative and it's horrible. The jealousy. I've never had a jealous boyfriend. No one really liked me actually that dated me, but, but I would always, I would think of that as like a compliment. If someone was like jealous, I would love, like, yeah. I wish people would get more jealous. I'm like, why aren't you jealous? Well, no, what I didn't understand at the time, like I, he would accuse me of things and like, he always thought I was cheating and stuff. And like, that's so common in somebody who's cheating. I just, ne- I yeah. never thought that he would cheat on me. Like it, what didn't even cross my mind. He was cheating the whole time. That's- so actively. Wait, but you're together every day. How does that happen? In my own house. He was cheating <gasps> in my, like he would, he'd be messaging girls, asking for new, like he just like in my own oh, house. Oh no. The whole time. I'm like. The whole time. Just literally, like fully. One time I, mm. or way after the relationship, I had, he had flown me out to New York and I like spent a couple of days with him in New York and came back and I found out he like literally was with another girl the day before in New York and she yes. sent, she sent it to me and like all of these girls like had no idea who I was. I'm like, oh my God. Did he not post you mm-mm. on socials? Did you post him or you guys private that way? I posted, he demanded that I post him because he wanted to make sure everyone knew I had a boyfriend. Oh, how weird because I've dated people who would never post me, but I could never post them. Like we didn't even take pictures together. It was like, really? Yeah, that's at least, at least you got to post him. <laughs> well, yeah, mind, like, like, but, but it was strange. Like I'd be, I was always, he would repost everybody. Like if we, we went to like his album release party and he'd repost Tana, repost everyone but me. Oh my God. And I was, I thought that was really strange. I was like, what, like, what's that about? And you know, did you ever say anything or you guys? Yeah. I, and yeah, I did. And he it. just, he would just be like, well, I don't know. Like, that's not, you know, what a musician will do. They'll be like, I can't, that's not good for my image. I'm like, oh my God, you are not Sean <laughs> Mendez. Nobody gives a fuck if you're single or not. <laughs> that is, that's the 
tricky part about dating people like that because, you know, but no, he, nobody was worried about if he was single or not. <laughs> let me tell you that. Yeah. If anything, I feel like it would boost his image because yeah, his, his whole thing is singing like beautiful <laughs> love songs. Like nobody's going to be shocked that you're in love. Right. Right. Like, oh, it's about the, like Ed Sheeran. Like people love that he has like his wife. And yes. Kids. And Cute. so it was yeah. so confusing to me, but like, God forbid, I like don't post him on like national boyfriend day or something. That really, like, he would get upset about it. That's so interesting. I've never had someone like that. Like, again, this is why I'm not, would never be a good therapist. Cause my, my borderline is like, that's kind of cute. But then I'm like, I guess not. No, Here, but like, I, I get that. Yeah. I have things all the time where I'm like, well, maybe that's cause. Like, yeah. <laughs> but like, I did the whole time I was justifying that stuff. Cause I was like, God, he just like, he's so, he's so in love with me. Right. No, he isn't. Yeah. He's all. just controlling and. Like, but maybe I, there must've been love there if he was spending every day, like just trying to feel like, don't go back to him, but I'm just saying no, maybe I, there was to not think, to think that you no, never I, I like mean, loved. Of course. And I loved him. So yeah. it was like, who knows? Yeah. Well, not, hopefully just not go back to him though. Oh no. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. I was like, he no. would, he, I, he would <laughs> never speak to me again. And I just know that. Well, I feel right now, if you could have anything, if you could star in a movie, have a husband or have horses, who, what would you pick? I would pick star in a movie because wow, good. then I can find a husband and we can <laughs> buy a horse. Cute. Oh my God. Who would you want to star in the movie with? Mm, Matthew McConaughey. Oh my God. I love, he, direct, not to make it all about me. Oh my God. I did a music video where he directed me and it's called um, Playing the Part by Jamie and Johnson. you don't love him? I, I love so him. shocking to me. Oh God. I, I don't him. love him like that. It's, it is interesting how people just gravitate towards certain people because I never was like, oh, I love I can't think of a person in the world who's like more handsome than, than Matthew, Matthew McConaughey. McConaughey. I definitely don't think he's like handsome. I think he's kind of weird looking. Really? Oh my I mean, God. traditionally good looking, yes, but which is weird because you said you don't really like traditionally good looking I guys. know, but I like him. So you would start with Matthew McConaughey. Maybe he might be a little old for me, but. Mm, well, also no. married. <laughs> also Maybe married, but it's just a movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right, right, right. For sure. <laughs> the acting of it. I could see you doing it. Are you taking, you have an agent or you said you have a manager? I, do, I have a manager. I don't have an agent. Are you going to look for one to try your acting? Right? Probably eventually. Honestly, I would love to get back into it. I just... I don't know. You're very like um, brand. Do you remember that show Scream Queens? Like I feel like that's totally yeah. your vibe. Like sorority <laughs> girl. Like that That whole. was my vibe. I'm trying to get away from it a little bit. Wait, catch me on a horse. Oh yeah. Now you're going <laughs> the horse life. Every time you say horses and guys, I just think like Ken from the Barbie like, movie. I've literally never ridden a horse. I don't know where I'm getting this horse just TikTok girl on. era. Isn't that crazy how TikTok can influence you? Like your for you so page. So and like just the, the most random, like I'll find like someone's Instagram that I love and I'm like, oh my God, she rides horses. Like I have to be a horse girl. That's so funny, but I love it. Just taking other people's personalities. It's Me best. too, until I, all I like eventually find my own. Yeah. It might never happen. That I don't know. I still haven't found my own. I'm like, I have no idea what but I that's even the like. Thing. That's like the whole thing is like no sense of like self-identity, but I'm like, I don't really, that's fine. Yeah. You may I never like it. find I'm having it. fun trying new things. <laughs> it's never boring. It's never boring to find new obsessions and new personalities. That. That's the thing. I love being obsessed with things. Yeah. It's my, it's, it's fun. fun to me. How people don't is actually insane to me. Like how you don't obsess over a TV show, how you don't obsess over a person. Yeah. Cause but, it's like, well, it's like, it's fun. But then when you're obsessing and it's negative, it's like, so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to obsess over or only positive things. It's good things. That yeah, go. we got to work on that. Yeah. Or I got to work on that. You got Just, it. You got it made. <laughs> no, there's sometimes, but honestly, there was, I was addicted to like reading negative comments. I don't know what it was. I think you just want to know. I think it's the morbid curiosity, but now I'm like, I don't really need to know. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. You know, ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is bliss. And that's the best thing. <laughs> what is the one life lesson you would tell yourself at 15 years old? Ooh. Or words of encouragement. What would you tell your 15 year old self? Um, I don't know. I was really insecure at 15. That was the peak of like, I thought I was so obese and ugly and horrible, mm. but it's like, I thought everybody like felt that way. And it's like, nobody's paying attention to anybody but themselves. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's what I would say. Like, yeah, don't worry so much. No like one's you're, worrying. You're obsessed with yourself and everyone else is also obsessed with themselves. Mm -hmm. That's a good advice. I feel like to tell people watching, I think when you know that like younger kids watch you or like teenagers and stuff like that. So I think that's good advice to give because mm -hmm. people do think that you always think like, oh my God, everyone thinks of that. And the majority of people don't. And the haters are not the majority. The haters are people who are like obsessed yeah, with but you. Anyone <laughs> who's going online to comment that stuff is like, is miserable. Yeah. Like they have to be. And then you got to feel bad for them. The real world, like you said, no one's looking out at your weight or anything like that. And if they are, then there's something like weird with them because it's like, well, and then I used to be like I, I would look at girls like I'd be obsessed with girls in my sorority and stuff like that I thought were the most beautiful girls in the world who were bigger than me and I'm like why am, why do I think I'm obese and I don't think anything like you know yeah. what I mean it's so strange it is a weird thing I think it's almost like 
body dysmorphia or something it like is, that. But like, God, that's the least important thing in the entire world yeah. is what your body fucking looks like. Oh, but that's like the thing I just avoid the most. A body image is like my, but, and it's the hardest thing to get rid yeah. of. Like I literally, I, I still do. And I'm like, you know, like all I ever wanted to do was like be the weight I am now. And I, I still think about it really? so constantly that it's like, it will never, ever stop. You'll never stop. Like all of a sudden be skinny and be happy. I hear ever. that a lot about people who lose weight. They're like, I thought I'd like fix all my problems and then it didn't. What do you think about? Do you think about the eating? Do you think about how you look? Like what's, what is your, I don't know. Just like I went so many years, like not, or probably like the last four years I've been so good about it. Like not feeling guilty when I ate something and mm-hmm. everything. And then I lost all the weight and got the validation. And now I'm like, every time I eat something, I'm like, I shouldn't you have done feel that. Interesting. So that's like, that's yeah. And that's something it's, I feel every, I struggle every day. I always struggle. I'm like, I shouldn't eat today. I shouldn't do that. Like it's every day. And but it's like it's hard. It's so like, Oh my God. I wish like you could shut it off. Yeah. It's like not logical. It's like something, it's the one thing that I just haven't been able to like grasp control. Like I'm also just really like happy in life. So I'm just like, I don't want to eat food cause I'm just happy. Yeah. You know? And you have to eat. That's the thing you have to eat. So it's just like, you can't cut it off cold turkey. Yeah. It's, so. I don't know. I don't know how to ever get rid of that. I did though. I felt like I was like so good on it. I, I didn't think about it for so long. Yeah. And then that happened. You know what I, the only time I didn't think about it is when I was pregnant and I actually like lost weight in my pregnancy. Like I actually was smaller after I gave birth than I was before I gave birth. Like it was very bizarre. That's true. But yeah. you like, that you literally brought a light. Like, right. Your body just knows. I was like feeling full. I've never felt full in my life. And during pregnancy, I was like full all the time. I was like, wow, is this how normal people feel? Like you feel full after like half of your meal? Like I never feel that way. And now I never feel that way. So I'm like, only during pregnancy. It's very weird. It's very bizarre. I never feel full either. I'm like, well, the, I don't even have to be hungry to eat is the problem. I know. Same. I, I just, just want to have want a snack. It. It's just I so nice. It. And everyone's doing Ozempic now. I'm like, maybe one day I'll do Ozempic. No, know. it's so stupid. And like, people say they like it. People are like, they do. It. And a lot of people have had like a lot of success. Honestly, my dad's on Ozempic. Like I know a lot of people who are doing it, but it just like, I don't know. I, I, no, you, like it doesn't help. No one's happier. I am. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I can never speak to it, but maybe. I don't think I would do Ozempic. I think I would. No, not, so, not so long as you guys are still having kids. <laughs> right. That's what I always say. I mean, maybe after I have kids, maybe I'll do like the tummy tuck, the Ozempic, all that stuff like that. No. <laughs> I used to be a loving surgery and then now. Do, have you ever had any plastic surgery? I did Um, I did air sculpt in my arms, like the like laser lipo. Oh. Because I like, I had like an imaginary thought that my arms were disproportional. Was it, do you thought they were like bigger or yeah, what? Yeah, and they honestly like, they like were. But I had, I have huge arms. <laughs> well, I just had like a like a heavier like upper body. I was like built like an AirPod. So I was like, oh, we have what an AirPod? <laughs> an AirPod like the ones that go in your ears? Yeah, like you know, like like oh my just God. straight on the bottom and <laughs> big on the top. Um, but were I you did, put under or were you awake? I was I was awake, but I couldn't feel it. It was like it was super easy. I just had to wear like a little faha for a couple weeks. Oh, did you think it makes a difference? It made a big difference mm-hmm. for me. I had lipo on my arms and then they got gained it all back. They always say like lipo, you can't gain the fat back. And that's not true. My arms are fatter than ever. So I don't know where yeah, I came from. I think from it's all them. propaganda. That is so true. I think that too. <laughs> Surgery can be get a little bit of a scam. If you want to get it, my boobs aren't, I think Whitney said her boobs weren't even too. My boobs are very uneven. So I would always keep those, but. I lost mine. I Honestly, lost mine. it's in. I'm telling everyone with the small boobs, I'm like, that's really in right now. If mine weren't like floppy and everything, I would get them. That's I would the get problem them. is they like, they're, they're, they're hanging. Oh, well, that's I get cute. time and a little knot. Are they're natural? Mm-hmm. Keep them. Honestly, keep them. I feel like natural like is so much Yeah, and I would, like, I would lift them up, but I'm like, I want to have kids. Yeah, So wait. might as well wait. Yeah, yeah, wait for all that because it will. Mine are so floppy. The episode with Tana was something that chair, my, my boobs were so floppy. I was like, oh my God, what did that happen? They used to be so perky. I love it. That's fun. Oh my God. No, I'm not a floppy pancake person. <laughs> but I love pancakes. I could not I your just, dog, though. I'm really into right now, though. Like the like Lila's got the rock hard, like oh. the best. I love that look right now. It's that very I'm like, 2007, and I love it, too. 2007, all the girls on Rock of Love had their boobs up there. I know, and I'm like, wait. No, she looks she looks good. Lila, it, she's so perfect. I I know I gotta get around. She's a little bit of a, a wild, a wild card. I'm always kind of scared, even on cancel when she comes on. I'm like, she's a loose I know, cannon. But, she, but she's such a character. Like, I, it no, I love it, her. We, we get like honor about it on canceled though, because she'll come on can- like she's the most entertaining person ever, and she still is. But she'll come on canceled, and all of a sudden she's this character that we're like, who are you? Oh, really? Just totally different off thing. I guess I've always seen her just such a high energy level that I'm yeah, just like, that's all I know. She's like. She's very like normal usually. She's on podcast. She just be. She says the name. She spills all the tea. She needs her we're own try, podcast. We're trying to help her with that. <laughs> In a way, it's the best podcast guest because like you have so many names you could drop. I'm like, I want to know about this. Oh, I know, but she's someone's gonna kill her. 
well, honestly, even me talking about people, that's like the way I stop talking about people just in general. Like you just never know. People are getting a little mad about this these days. Yeah. It really scares me. Yeah. I'll well, start lying about people. I'm like, yeah. And he's a tennis player. Yes. <laughs> no, so they don't like, no. They yeah. I was going to ask you, we have gotten literally, oh my God, it's almost three hours. Oh my but God. I, know, it's crazy, I love you. But <laughs> there was, did you, you probably cut it out. I don't watch any of the interviews back that I've ever been on on podcast, but we talked about, we don't have to say who it is. The guy you went on the date with at four o'clock. Cut it. Did you cut it? I Why? Cut, I cut it. I was scared. I, I like, he just cut it. <laughs> that was the most interesting thing. We don't have to, we don't even have to like give clues, nothing like that other than you went to dinner at five, four o'clock with him. But, um, like that situation, did you DM him? I meant to ask you about no, this back then too. So he, he used to come in to catch when I worked there. And so he would like, oh. like he just, we just became like friends there. And then we would like DM back and forth. And I really like, I don't know, in my head, I really thought it was like a casual, like I, sometimes <laughs> I'm like really oblivious to like, if somebody's 50 something, I really am never thinking in my head that they could be like romantically interested in me. Cause I still oh, feel like I'm a kid. Right. So you I'm, are compared to a 50 year old. Yeah. So then I like go thinking like, Oh my God, this is so nice. He's like a mentor and like an idiot. Oh. And it's like, he did not think that that was, it was romantic. It was romantic. How did you know? Did you try to kiss you? No. He, yeah. Well, he like started texting me some weird stuff where I was like, no. Wait, like what? Like sexual? Yeah. He would just be like, and and we're going to, like, make out, blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, oh, that's... Just kind of, like, weird things. That's that, like, an old a, man he's, way he's, wait, he's, like, 60-something, too. Like, oh, way my. too old for me. Did you kiss? Did you kiss him? No. no. None of it. You just I'm went to dinner at four and then went back home? Yeah. Did he pick you up? No. Okay, that's good. You met him there. Mm -hmm. I think that's... Again, because I'm old and like I always like old guys. I was like, oh my God, that's the one. But like seeing him now after that conversation, I like looked him up and I was like, oh my God, like, ew. Yeah. With young girls too, I think that with Dan Cook, he was such a big comedian when I was young and it's so hot. Everyone loved him. And to see him with the girl that he met when she was like 17, I was That's like, really scary. Yeah, didn't they, did they just got married? They just got married. And everyone's like, his longtime partner, 24 year old. I'm like, long time <laughs> partner. I was like, how no, long? I know. And he's like 51. And I'm just like, how people don't see that's like not okay. How these guys are like okay with it looking that old compared it, to them. It's like it has to be like a power dynamic. I know a couple people like that where it's like you can't control somebody who's like closer in age to you. Oh, of course. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it's so manipulative. Like a little young girl, she's like, dee, 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 you're so rich and powerful. Yeah, it's how you like you thought even with that guy, you know, being like a mentor who introduced well, you to thought, people I and thought, he'll do like, this. He's kind of in my same like genre, like not genre, but like I was like, I, I could probably learn something from him. And he's an icon. But. Yeah, and he knows so many influential people, and it just would make sense. Like I, I would get where you're coming from. Like some people would look and be like, Okay, you knew it was a date, but I probably did. Like I honestly, yeah. Like, did you probably. dress up? Were we no, covered? I, no, I was just wearing like a podcast outfit. I went and podcasted immediately after. Did you talk about it? Did you talk about it on your mm. podcast? No. No. Okay. Because we talked about it. I was like, that's so interesting. Because I was like, oh, I want to know so much about I mean, this. No. I just, I get scared iconic. with anything celebrity. Like, I never, I am really scared to say names. Because I don't want yeah, anyone to ever be, like, like, afraid of me. Yeah, yeah. I think that's smart. And I think with this kind of stuff, it's it's relatively harmless if someone, like, did harm to you or something. Like, you know, this yeah. is a different thing. But this is a harmless thing. And I just think it's so fascinating. The people you meet, the people you encounter. There's something about you. You're the magnet. Oh, I'm good at, you so. know, of all good things. You know, Tana saw something in you. These people see something in you. And oh my God, the comment you. section saw something in you. And I'm so, this, honestly, I literally thought, oh, maybe we're at two hours. It's like three hours. Oh, it's my crazy. God. That's crazy. Oh, my God. You are amazing. You're such a delight. I'm so happy to, like, get to know you and just know everything about you. I think you're such a light on oh the internet. Oh my god, I love you. I will, like, I will lose it. Oh my god. <laughs> you know I me? Just, I'm like, I'm emotional. I know. Same. We both just start crying. <laughs> I, I see like great, amazing things. I can't believe you're still like so young. So I hope you just do everything that you want to do and I get everything you. you want out of life. Stop looking at Reddit. I'm never looking at Reddit again <laughs> and I love you so much. Thank you so much I for having you. me. I actually can't believe it. Yeah, I want to come on cancel. Are you guys dr you're dressing up now, right? Yes. And I saw I the clowns or something you were. I would love nothing more for you. To, like people, we told, we suggested like, what if Trisha like came on like more often and everyone went crazy. Oh, I think that would be so fun. I would love for you to come back. I think I've had Tana on. I think she's coming on next week. She's like three times. I'd love to you come back. I, I love, love repeat guests. It is like, cool because you're, I mean, it's just Trish. So yeah, it's, it's like, why, like you can bring in really whoever you want. And I feel like with all the stuff happening, hot topics, I mean, your guys' life's always like interesting to me. I'm like, God, you guys are doing so much. But it is so fun. Like, I feel like you're such a person we can bring in and just talk about anything. Like yeah. what is going on? Well, that's what I love about cancel. I love, and I love to do it because it's definitely not like an interview where it's like, so how did you get started? How do you do the mukbang? You know, it's yeah. like fine, but it's just so well, much. people know. Anyone watching canceled knows everything about <laughs> Trisha Paytas. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> and now everyone knows everything about Burger Schofield. You are on so many podcasts. You're all everywhere. You're all over the place. And I, I love, love to see it. Hold out for the right guy. I will. Theo Vaughn. And no. <laughs> yeah, Theo. <laughs>
Theo, if you're listening. Oh, man, that would be a good one. That'd be a good pair. And um, yeah, you guys check out Cancelled. They're no longer on tour, but maybe they'll come back on tour. Yay. So, and thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. Woo-hoo. Bye. <laughs>